This is our town. Welcome! All right, let's do this again. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Value Town, episode 173. I'm Chan Man V, and we've got a great cast here on today because we've got some very, very uh, interesting topics to talk about today. I think that we're going to have a pretty good, passionate discussion today. I want to welcome uh, RDU and Fino, professional players. What's up, guys? Hello. Good to be here. And then, uh, and then Tom... I'm just going to say Matheson again. I mean, you never told me how to actually <laughs> properly <laughs> pronounce fine. it. It's he's, fine. he's a journalist. He writes uh, articles for um, Inven and HS Top Decks. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about matchmaking, which is going to be fun <laughs> because these guys have already been talking to before the show. And it's been a very, very great discussion. And then we're going to uh, do a mid-season state of the H HTT, you know, really assess good things that, that have been happening with HCT and then, you know, some things that they, or at least we'd like to see them um, continue to work on. Uh, a little recap of DreamHack Summer that happened, uh, what was that, a week and a half ago now? And then um, some questions for Q&A. But uh, I want to start off, as always, just talking about what we've been doing in Hearthstone. So, uh, Radu, like, what have you been up to, dude? Um, I, I focus mostly on streaming, but now I stopped it because I want to, like, get the finish. Because if I get to finish this month, I don't have to get to finish next month. So there's like no pressure and I don't have to like decline tournaments and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident I'll get to finish. Okay. Even though the ladder is not as it was last <laughs> month. Man, you're preparing like days before this time, right? Like <laughs> you can't wait to the last minute, man. I knew so many people that got burned last time or you yeah, know, a few no, months I ago. I always like to play in advance. Like yeah. playing last days is like uh, bad, I think. Mm -hmm. Like you should I, I always play last days. Yeah, but you're already top 50 day. before the last day. That, that's like, that doesn't even count. <laughs> yeah. That's not the same thing, dude. <laughs> I'm talking uh, about people like, in, you know, that's 300 or 500, and then they wait until the last day. Oh, yeah, know. okay, sure. No. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so. I did this last month because I was in China, so like I, I, I kind of gave up on Ladder last month. Yeah. Like I came back from China like three days to go, and I didn't play while I was, was there at all. And I also streamed it when I was back, so yeah. I, I set myself up to like not making it. Okay, nice. F uh, Fino, how about you? I mean, you, you were just telling me you're top 50 on every single server right now, so it <laughs> looks yeah, like you're I in mean, good shape, man. You're in pretty good shape. It's, lately, it's been a bit rough for me because there's been too much traveling with the tour stops and all that, so I, I don't get that much time to like stream and do everything I want, but... Yeah, it's been it's been going pretty well. I just need to get my last top twenty five finished, so I don't need to bother about the last uh, next month. So yeah, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. All right. Tom, how's your laddering going? <laughs> oh man, horrible! I've I've barely played at all this month, and so in the first half of this month, I was busy finishing my bachelor's uh, degree. So and yeah. then afterwards, I've been very busy writing articles. Uh, this week alone, I have to transcribe six interviews. So oh wow, you know okay. it, uh, it, it takes up some time. But uh, it's all for good, you know. It's uh, they, the Arts and Summer Championships are around the corner, so I'm very excited yeah. for that. Yeah, that's like this week, right? It's, it's, it's uh, yeah, this yeah, weekend. It's this yeah, weekend. it starts tomorrow. Yeah. So, uh, it's tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it starts tomorrow. It's going to be pretty amazing. Hopefully, everybody got a chance to vote for their champion. I got dog right here, babe. <laughs> oh, bunny hopper, man! I bunny asked him. As I almost think bunny hopper too. I I, I asked um, him how many pecs are you going to give me, and he said at least one. So I knew he he was my man. So. Okay. All right. All right. so much confidence yes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um okay well uh that sounds like uh, you guys are you know at least prepared for the end of the month there anything you guys are playing right now what's the meta looking like for you guys i'm playing druid and i think fino is also playing druid which one yeah it's, it's all druid which one token taunt what, what is it malagus <laughs> all of them i just, I just, I just switch around like depending on the meta <laughs> I prefer Token Druid. I think it's just, mm -hmm. just really, it's just a really good deck right now. And if you play it well, you can get an edge over anything, everything. I feel mm -hmm. not all, almost everything. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I barely had a chance. I'm kind of with you, Tom. I had barely had a chance. So I'm like last minute trying to get to Legend right now. So I've just been, you know, doing the even shaman thing, which 
It's like 72% win oh, percentage. Yeah. It's pretty good right now, at least where yeah. I am. Yeah. But, um, you know, I've been playing those, you know, rank 2,000, rank 3,000 players, you know, being at rank 2, which kind of brings us to our first topic, which is matchmaking <laughs> as, uh, you know, it's, well, we, we've got mixed opinions, that, yeah, at least on our panel here, <laughs> actually, as to how uh, the degree of, of, of how bad matchmaking has been. Um, just for folks that may not have or may, may have been under a rock the last, you know, week or two. Uh, we've definitely seen some different behavior in the matchmaking for in, in Hearthstone, particularly in the Legend ranks, or even just like ranks. I would say six through one is what's been you know like I think noted, and um, you know we're seeing a lot of Legend players end up playing folks like in the ranks one through six. Um, you know, personally, I definitely played my share of of folks in the you know two. I would say anywhere from like. 1,000 to 3,000 in the, the ranks, you know, f two through five. But sometimes that happens. You know I mean? Sometimes people just, like, tank their MMR and, and, you know, you're just there. And somebody, sometimes folks in the rank, ranks one through five, just happen to have a higher MMR for whatever reason. And, um, but, you know, the amount that it's happening right now, I mean, we saw so many tweets from pros and streamers and everything showing all kinds of different ones. Are you, you know, posting every single day at what point? No, <laughs> no but, uh, you know, but we, we've seen all kinds of, of, of um, you know, evidence, right, that we, we're seeing some different behavior. Is it as bad as it was in March? I mean, I don't think it was as bad as it was in March. No. No, no. But clearly there is something going on, that, you know, better than March is at least happening a little bit earlier in the month so people can, I don't know, they can at least try to prepare for the end of the month given, you know, what we're seeing with just um, low point um gains whenever you win you know versus like i think some some folks are just losing more when they lose so um you know people are having to adapt whether it's fair or not we'll discuss it in a second but um first off let's just like i just want to have everybody's opinion that you guys like what degree in which you think the matchmaking has changed this you know last few weeks so i think me and Roger should take turns on this one because yeah. we have different opinions yeah yeah so the popular opinion is that it's changed a lot. So why don't we start with Tom? We'll start with Tom first, and then we'll, we'll work our way around. So Tom, what do you think? Tiebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I um like my judgment on this is mainly based on uh, of what I've seen uh, other pros uh, tweet because I've played too little to notice anything myself. But um, yeah, I I think there's some people who say yeah, you just uh, you definitely need a higher win rate to get uh to the top uh ranks in legend. And then there's some people who say, yeah, I, um, I'm constantly being paired against uh, low opponents like rank one, rank mm -hmm. two opponents, even though I am fairly high up in Legend. So I think that's mainly those two things that are um, happening on ladder at the moment, um, from, from what I've seen at least. Yeah. Uh, Radu, what, how about you? Personal experience and friends experiences i don't know <laughs> can i let fino go first you and fino no, you go first, first. Yeah. oh my okay. man you have the popular opinion i have the unpopular so you go first <laughs> okay so i don't know like i don't think lada is that bad i think uh the only difference is that uh as you guys said you basically need a higher win percentage to get uh to the good ranks and i don't know if i like that because a higher win percentage kind of means a percentage that normally you shouldn't get. So you need an, a very big upswing to be able to get your rank. And that's not necessarily a problem if you play all day. But what if you're like a really good player but cannot afford to play all day? Then you're just going to like be left behind. Because you already needed to kind of play for your upswing, like even in the other seasons. But now you really need like a, I don't know, 65% win rate, which in other seasons would be like enough for number one legend. Now it will only get you like a top 25. So I, I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. I think it's doable if you just like just play more and like play well and not lose your mind. You're probably going to do fine. But I expect a lot of people to not do fine this month just because of uh, how much, not how much harder. It's like two or three percent harder, but it matters and like it's noticeable. Not very noticeable, but it's noticeable. It's two or three percent harder. I feel like it's wor more than that. I mean, if because you know I've been seeing people winning seventy, se over seventy percent win percentage, right, and and only ga gaining just a 
<laughs> okay. All right. Fino's turn. Let's no, go. This Let's is not go. happening. Okay. It's not, see, this is this is really good to have Fino on the show because I, I feel like Fino is like the one voice that definitely has like a different experience than everybody else. So what is your experience right now, Fino? Okay. So first of all, I want to start by saying that this season is nothing compared to what happened in, right. was it March? I don't remember. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was March, 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 definitely. March. Was yeah. End of March. That was like, that was the most unprofessional, the worst like thing I've ever experienced in Arston. I feel I was like so upset by that. And I still don't get how people got over that so quickly. And even back then, they didn't complain that much about now. So when it comes to, to this one, right? Uh, I was in Sweden for uh, DreamHack. And then when I was coming back, I was hearing that everyone was saying, oh, you can't climb a ladder. Uh, I get math against rank ones and then I lose and I have to win three to get back to my rating. I have like 65 or 70% win rate and I can't climb. And I'm like, damn, okay, we're, 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 we're dead. I'm, I'm not going to finish. So I come back home and then I play and everything <laughs> seems normal to me. And I climb like normally. I'm, yeah. I, I went from like 700 to top 50 on all servers in two days with like a 65 or 70% winner, which is a lot. But, but the fact that you play rank one players increases that win rate kind of, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I think, I, sure. think just, I think people are just like really, they just really want to find something to complain about. But I, I will never complain about something. Like the only problem I have with this is that obviously something changed in matchmaking, right? I don't think it's that bad, but I think the fact that Blizzard doesn't communicate it with us is a bad part. Yeah. Like, I am upset about that. I'm not upset about how they changed it. I think it's okay. I think it's fine. If you win, like everyone has the same, everyone has the same, um, like uh, chance, right? MMR game, right? Yeah, yeah, everyone can, everyone can climb right now. It's. I think it's okay. But it's the fact that they just don't communicate with us that's a main problem for me. Okay, so what I can add is like you only play against rank ones at lower ranks. For example, this morning I was like. 1200 on asia yep. and i killed i killed non-legends like 10 games in a row but i won like nine of those and then i managed to like squeeze out of the bad ranks and towards like the higher ranks it's way easier to climb actually but if you're in the dumpster it's very hard to break out like you need to you need a streak against the non-legends right because uh, uh, if, if i hmm? uh, if i may add to that because last month when i was uh, like at uh rank three or something then only then i started facing a uh, legend like 14k or something right that was it towards the end of the season and it was uh, i was rank three at the time legend 14k and if you say like you're a legend 2k should you then face legend 1k already if there's so many more legend players around you should face legend players and not non-legend. Like I think yeah. you should do something to just like make legends only face legends. So the, the the one thing that you know we're definitely talking about the whole matchmaking thing in terms of climbing, you know, and ranks mm -hmm. and and points and stuff. But let's just like get to the base basics of matchmaking. You know, the whole point of matchmaking is to actually match up players that are even skill level. You know, and and that that's just very. Bit, you know that, that's what matchmaking is supposed to be right like when, whenever you have a ladder you want to play somebody that's um you know the same skill level as you so you have a you know equal chance of winning i guess you know in a way right um sure. obviously that can't happen all the time because you know we don't have infinite amount of players online all the time so there's there's a range of things that happen so um right now you know if we're, we're speaking to that i mean we should we should talk about whether this is even right you know like i don't think the you know forget the whole point system that's obviously an hct impl impl implications but i just feel like the game itself right now is hurting it you know like even the ranks one through five they don't want to be playing legend players like you know they're trying to actually get to legend so th that's what's that's what's kind of difficult about the whole situation is that like yeah it's some of the pro players are complaining because of points and stuff at the top but then these non-pro players they're not having a good experience either because they're losing nine times out of ten to guys like radu you know playing him and you know when he's at the rank, <laughs> rank 1000 or something i mean that's like you know that sucks when you're trying to get to legend so something you know i don't know exactly what's going on because you know if you know there's been times where it seems to work fine for me too you know like mm -hmm. i'm playing yeah. guys that i should be playing but then mm -hmm. all of a sudden there'll be like a couple of games where it's like i don't know what happened like there's just nobody available and they or they some kind of algorithm is a little bit different and strange, right? 
So yes, for sure. For yeah, sure. I, I, I mean, think they've definitely changed something, and it's probably not a great change. But I, I just don't think the, the like the competitive players who are like who can get the, the finishes should should complain like about like this the, the current like M, the MMR like chains or whatever. I think like I I just remember that the last time on March only me and Rado were like complaining a lot, right? No, Gara uh, was too. But but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like people people started complaining like mostly after they missed the finish or something. But I, I mean, it, I got the finish that month, and I'm still complaining because I think that's like, that was like way too much. And yeah, yeah. even though I think right now it's like pretty bad what they did with the changes, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but what what the frustrating part is, like mostly, is as Fino said earlier, right? There's no communication because what we saw in March is first. Uh, the visible thing was that the rank reset. It was the first month that mm -hmm. you would only lose four ranks, yeah. and that went wrong for many players. Right? They they ended up uh, needing only one win to get legend, mm -hmm. and then they stuck there. And then twice within the month they changed the MMR rating, and one was just a few days before the end of the month. And at that time, some players were at a tour stop competing, so they couldn't compete uh, and and try to get a high legend finish. And then afterwards, Blizzard comes and say says yeah, all right, we're going to try to be more transparent. We're sorry, we care about the competitive integrity. And now there's hundreds of Legend players playing and uh, everybody's noticing something has changed. And we're just, you know, we're left in the dark again. And that's, I don't know. I don't know why. Sorry, not sorry. That's the thing, that they say that they're sorry. But, I mean, are they sorry? Like, I don't no, think they're I, sorry. I, so I think there's... I mean, I, I, you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. Like, I think there is a reason why they haven't talked, like, talked to us yet. I don't know if it's, you know, let's just hype, try to guess, right? Like, maybe it's something they still haven't figured out how to fix yet. So, I mean, does that give them an excuse not to at least tell us something? You know, they, no, they, it doesn't. But I don't think it I does. Mean, I mean, generally, when they do speak to us, they have like a full explanation of a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? Like, just looking historically. So, I think we might be in the same boat here, where where it's. They just haven't figured out exactly how to resolve this. Um, mm -hmm. That that could be a scenario. Uh, I mean, I don't think that it's they just don't care. Okay, like this this whole you know pitchforking thing. I don't. That's not the case. Like, I mean, they, they have. I mean, they it's, care. It's, I mean, there's no way they right? don't care. How okay? do they like? So. It it really seems like they don't care because first the thing in March happens when like the the whole MMR thing was but like was the worst. The, Experience ever, <laughs> and then yeah. then it happens when they patch the thing and they nerf quest druid. When everyone in in Seoul <laughs> submitted quest druid, then it seems like they don't care and they're not sorry again. And then this happens. Well, they so, they I apologize mean, for that. Come on, the HTT career. Oh, okay. So I'm just, I'm just gonna do everything bad all the time and then just apologize and be okay with it. Well, I'm not okay. With we're that. we're not okay with it because they haven't apologized for this yet. You know, that's they <laughs> will, but it's like <laughs> it's... I mean, if they, if they can just keep doing whatever they want, like poorly and then just apologizing it's it's not gonna be a good right yeah, okay, no, so I, I think you, you go ahead I think yeah. many of the problems are because of the infrastructure right like i think they're focusing more on the infrastructure of the system and then they don't really have time to do everything like it's probably pretty hard to set up all these tour stops to set up the championships to promote the tour stop to promote the championships to do all these things they don't really have time to like apologize for this but my issue is that ladder matters so much that like they should do it better. They should treat it better. Like in an ideal world, I think we we would even have like a pro ladder where like uh, you would qualify based on like something, maybe like good finishes, and then you would just like earn points from that pro ladder, and it would be like a more consistent system where you don't really have uh, that many problems because there's less players, so they cannot like mess it up. But when there's like thousands and tens of thousands of players involved, some things can go, go wrong and then it affects the whole infrastructure because points are like so important and most of the points you get them from laddering. Yeah. So right. uh, go, go ahead, Tom. Oh yeah, no, what I was I was gonna respond to uh, Fino and say like, yeah, that what happened is bad and like you can discuss the whole sorry, not sorry thing, but the, the point is, and Blizzard has notoriously struggled with communicating uh, in, in any of their games, um, but in order for these these changes to how matches are, are paired up on ladder, in order to, 
for that to have happened, somebody must have touched something, right? Because from from uh, from April to now, it's it's gone fine. So somebody at Blizzard, or they, they must have discussed, okay, we're going to change something. They knew they were going to change something. So why not announce that, hey, listen, we're going to try something in the matchmaking and not, not explain after it happens. Because just say, hey, listen, guys, in, um, yeah, yeah. in, June, in June, we're going to um, change the matchmaking. So you need a bit of a higher win rate. Um, and you might face off against uh, rank one players in certain circumstances. I don't know which which they are, but if they just say like, "Okay, guys, this is gonna happen. We'll see how it works out. Let us know your feedback." And then if everybody says it's good or it's bad, then they can they can respond to that. Do we know oh. if it's only happening at the top? Like, is this is this matchmaking? You know, like where it doesn't seem to be matching the right people together. Is is it happening in like rank fifteen, rank twenty? Is there any? Has there been any evidence of that happening, or is it literally just you know we think it's at least just limited to legend and you know rank ranks one through whatever five or six. I mean, no, no one is at that rank anymore, right? Because the people yeah. who care always get on like rank four and closer. So we. I don't know if how feedback. I think there's still quite a few people in like rank ten and twelve, and I mean, if seventy percent of the people are rank twelve and below before you know we had the whole you know uh, floors and stuff like, or you know just mm -hmm. I don't know how many months ago, right? Like the the, the actual stat was seventy percent people twelve or less. I'm sure it's still pretty high, right? Like half the uh, Hearthstone players are still in that range. So I'm I'm wondering if it's an issue down there too, and just nobody says anything about it down there. Um, but okay, so it looks like Gotrix says in the chat that it, that the lower ranks are fine. So it, it does seem to be only happening at the top. Um, okay, yeah, they. I don't. I don't know what it is. Like maybe we'll know like once they do finally say something about it. But it's been really weird. <laughs> like that. Like that's why. That's why I mean. Or that's why I kind of feel like there is something else going on behind the scenes that um, you know maybe they haven't figured out or whatever. But it's just like eerie how quiet they've been you know it's yeah they don't they're not usually this quiet like they'll, they'll be talking about other stuff and just ignore that that subject i feel like they're not even talking about anything right now you know yeah it's, it's weird right it's like it's really like ever since like ben broad left uh they're, they're obviously still they probably already appointed somebody new a new elite designer uh but ever since broad left they were like okay we we should be careful with uh how we communicate things or say anything because we don't have a, a face for our game or something oh. that they're just yeah. like okay I don't, I don't know I don't know if that's the case or not but um, you know that's what everybody thinks though right since Broad left you know this or that no but I, I'm not saying like since Broad left like the game's gone better or worse it's just that they've been more careful with communicating things because they don't have somebody who can who they can point to and say like okay he's the face he will come forward <laughs> go to the wolves the... <laughs> yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and uh, you know ben broth can easily kick uh kick those wolves ass but yeah yeah it's true it's definitely true um all right but actually before we uh continue on i just want to let folks know that this episode of value 10 is uh sponsored by zip recruiter if you're not familiar with zip recruiter it's a uh it's a hiring website so you know if hiring is a challenge for you uh, there's this is a great place to go since hiring is like simple, fast, and smart when you go to there. Um, it's um, it's where you can actually find a lot of candidates because what it does is it like it aggregates like a hundred different sites and, and job boards all in one place. So you know if you want to post on all these boards, you can just post that ZipRecruiter, or if you want to you know be tracking all these things, or or you have like a certain type of candidate like you want to uh, try to find, you can just do it in ZipRecruiter and it'll scan all these different job boards for you, and you can find it e easily. And 80% um, of employers that use ZipRecruiter actually find their candidates within the first day, so that's pretty awesome. And um, uh, if you want to use uh, ZipRecruiter now, you can actually use it at uh, ZipRecruiter.com slash ValueTown. And um, ZipRecruiter uh, is the highest rated hiring site in America. So, um, you know, if, if you want to use the best product, you definitely want to use them. So, um, you know, ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Definitely give it, give it a try and obviously give them a shout out if they, since they're, you know, sponsoring the show and if you enjoy the show. Um, okay, well, uh, I don't know. Anything else you want, guys want to say about matchmaking before we actually jump into the HCT talk? Because I mean, I, I can add that, like, I think um, it's like the last throw on the camel's back, more like a thing. 
Uh, I don't know if I got the expression yeah. right, but like, is it? I mean, you guys feel it's that frustrated? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, that yeah. big, but like people are complaining because there's like so many issues in a row that like uh, they just like stack up and people are just like they reach the tipping point and they're like, okay, I'm done with this. Like, so who? Like, you're talking about players, or you're talking about yeah, viewers, players, players, or yes. okay, players. So have players you seen people, people quitting? Have you actually seen players quitting their their quest to uh, the BHCT champion because of the recent happenings? You know, I mean, it depends how you define NCT champion. But like, for example, after playing the system myself, I gave up on like uh, going to tour stops. Like, I'm trying to like just focus on playoffs because that's like the only tournament that I deem worthy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think generally speaking, if you you know if you continually mess up, then you know just the your reputation for what just how well of a job you're doing with the the league and stuff is going to be affected, right? So um, it, it's a you know it's a big endeavor to have HTT you know and just have all these moving parts. They they've obviously done a lot of changes this year, and we're about to talk about a lot of them too. But um, but this is not even just HTT. This is just like the game, you know. Like the something happened with the game. Unfortunately, it's impacting HTT too. But um, you know, something that they changed uh, has has had a negative impact for the last two weeks, and we still haven't you know seen anything. So hopefully they'll come out with something soon. Otherwise, we're just going to keep seeing that same thread be posted on Reddit, like literally every single day. Like maybe if we keep posting this thread, they'll respond. And it's like I, I gotta tell the guy like they're not maybe. they're not gonna respond based on that thread, dude. So maybe you can, you can stop posting that. Um, all right, let's talk about HTT. So um, I wanted to do a, like a mid season. You know, obviously the summer uh, championships are, are about to happen now, but um, I figured we would uh, take the opportunity just to talk about you know the good things and uh, the things that still need work on, when HTT. And since we've been already critical, you know, with this whole matchmaking thing, why don't we start with, uh, you know, talking about some of the positives we've seen so far with this, you know, this year with HTT and, you know, some of the changes that they've uh, put in place this year is that, you know, we, we have a, a few things that are actually a good number of things, right? We have um, the whole tier system that's in place now. Um, we have the team. Wait, wait, wait. Is that the positive? I would put it as a negative. Oh, you put it as a negative? Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. No, no. I didn't say it as a positive. I'm just stating like, the differences. Okay. So we've got oh, the yeah. tier system. Okay. We've got the team standings. We've got all the, the tour stops now. Less of the Challenger Cups, you know, or, or the, the online Cups like that we had before. And mm -hmm. um, different breakdown on the ladder now, too. Um, any other major things, you know, feel free to, to, to chime in on. Um, but you know, some of these things were, were quite different, you know, like, and, um, you know, it was obviously meant to be an improvement on last year. So, um, yeah. So let's talk about just overall HTT, uh, halfway point now, 2018. What are the good things that you've seen so far? Um, can I start? Yep. Go. Okay. So I think a really good thing is that they're putting more money into the scene. They're distributing like the money, they're making more events. They make events with live public, so they kind of get people involved. I always said it that I think the best experience you can get out of Hearthstone is to go to a LAN. And uh, they allow that to, even to casual players, and maybe they get those casual players more involved into the game by having uh, LANs all over the place. Like, there has to be a LAN near somebody, and it can be like a good experience to attend. At the same time, there's like so many tournaments that they lose their value, but Oh, keeping it only on the positives, I also think it's very good that they award money to everybody that participates in the playoff. This way, some people can just uh, just make their full-time job to go for the playoffs and then at least get uh, the reward from attending, which is not, like, insane, but it's, like, decent. If you, like, know you can make it for sure, it can be, like, a way to start your um, path in competitive person, I would say. And... Um, I also like that they made uh, the top eight in playoffs groups i would have loved if they would make the last match uh reversed from the groups so that you don't face the same guy twice because i think that can be a very oh, big disadvantage right. mm -hmm. but other than that this is uh pretty good okay <laughs> fino how about you man uh i think i think they're i think they'll be doing like a good job with what radu said again with like the prize pools and everything like they're they're putting more like focus and they're trying to care more about the uh, the competitive hearthstone scene let's say 
I think that's a very positive thing. And, and like, it's okay that they don't get it perfectly, like, the same time, right? the first time, right? Like, obviously, they can't start something and just have everything perfect, like, everything planned out. I think uh, there there have been a lot of uh, tour stops because I've been to like almost every single tour stop except one. Uh, I think I think they've been like pretty well organized. Like the the more the more we we continue with with them, I think that the better their organization gets. Like they don't make that many mistakes. There are not that many delays anymore, like as they were before. Uh, I just remember that like the last one that I went to, like the tour stop in Seoul, it was like the the best organized tournament. No, I mean it wasn't. It, it had like a lot of, it had a lot of like bad things. But I'm just saying that for like at least us as players, like the global, it was like we had like really good computers. Uh, everything went like pretty smoothly. But that was from our side, like from the APAC side, they had like a lot of issues. But I think it was like a well organized tournament. And as Radu said, like it was also very important that they had like an open audience and there were like a lot of people there and i've never seen like more passionate people than the korean players mm -hmm. it was actually really nice to be a part of that yeah, yeah. I, I like i like both uh the blizzard organized events like the one in korea and the one in uh, thailand like i think yeah. they went like hands-on on these events and they did them they did them themselves so like yeah they were like noticeably better yeah Tom, how about you? Yeah, there's a couple of things they've definitely done well. I'll, we'll get to it later, but uh, when Radu says he doesn't like the master tier system, but uh, I um, I think it's a, a, they, they've made uh, big steps forward into um, rewarding consistency within within Hearthstone. We see it um, now with uh, guys like Faye, Race, Fino has been doing very well, uh, Huntress, um, all those guys, you know, they've been performing consistent, consistently very well, and and it gets it uh, gets picked up right by the by the community by the other pros. So um, then there, there's some more minor things I think they've been doing well. So open deck lists were quickly adapted. I think in the beginning it was still um, closed, but I think open deck lists very important because at events like DreamHack. Um, people with a bigger friends network would have an advantage because they could stand behind other players and see what decks they're playing. Oh, That's wow. a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, true. Which was just ridiculous. So mm -hmm. just say open deck list, everyone. I, I like the surprise of closed deck list, but unfortunately uh, for events like that, you, you can't really do that. Right. Right. And um, yeah, I think the I, I'll add to the other two guys um, with, with audience. I, I remember last year, HET season, one of my biggest frustrations was when they, they would say like, and he's your champion. And there would be just two casters clapping. <laughs> like, yeah. The no, there's no confetti. There's just like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just, okay, cool. Here he is in an empty studio. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, now you great. can see the audience's response. Uh, it's, it's, that, that's been going very well. So. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I I agree too. I think the biggest um thing that that's gone well this year is the events themselves. Like, um even just as somebody who's spectating, right? Like I, I feel like, you know, I know what to expect every time we we have an event in terms of production and you know what the quality is going to be like. It's kind of cool that the events are are a little different. You know, like the dream hacks mm -hmm. are are a little bit different than you know some of the the other HTT events like in Asians and, and things like that. We've even had different formats altogether, which is like really cool you know i think it's great for the players yeah. too just having to experience some different things gives us more to talk about too in terms of you know what's good with last man hero standing versus you know conquest what the meta actually looks like during that it's kind of you know, mm. it's definitely been been great that way um yeah i think i think for tour stop specifically it's as very much dependent on which tour stop you look at whether it's gone well for players and viewers and whatever because yeah um Get like like for example, Dreamhack Tours was uh, <laughs> so by nightmare. many perceived like uh, <laughs> especially players by many like one of the worst because it was in the middle of nowhere. It ended late and players had to walk for an hour towards their to, to their hotel or whatever wherever they were staying, and then they had to get up at seven or eight a.m. the next morning uh, to get back to competing. So yeah, like it it depends much on the tour stop, but I've heard that like Austin, for example, was a fantastic experience. So, you know, there've definitely been some uh, some great ones as well. What's interesting, Fino, is that you said you, you thought Seoul was great. 
And going mm-hmm. into Seoul, I feel like going. I mean, besides the obviously the drama that happened because of the the um, the actual update, right, and the changes. But one uh-huh. of the things that a lot of people were, you know, really complaining about was just the schedule. Like how many matches you guys had to play, right, in that first day. <laughs> Wasn't that was uh, that was Seoul, right? That was where you had to play like a ton of matches in the first day like wasn't that no. Korea? yeah the schedule was uh they yeah. won seven swiss rounds right yeah seven swiss rounds in the first day they definitely i i definitely remember them yeah. uh, putting out that I mean, schedule I, I remember talking to tim you know and tim was saying like I, I i'm just, getting my players ready for that the crazy first day. Okay. no i just I, it was just like so comfortable like you had like your whole you had like your own computer you didn't need to like bring your own and stuff you didn't have to move. You had like an assigned seat. Yeah, it was like an it was like a good environment to like be in. So I I yeah. didn't really notice it. Okay, yeah, well that's great. I mean, I, I, I just like wanted to point that team. out. Just yeah, I like it too. Okay. Like as uh, playing the Soul tournament, I like it too. Okay. There's other. I, I heard some like, other feedback about admins uh, being very strict and snapping at players and. But, uh, I mean, this can happen to like events to like one player when you have like so many players and like so many admins. It's almost uh, impossible to have like a clean event with no yeah. issues. Okay. There's gonna be something. Yeah, yeah there's gotta be. Yeah, something. and I guess in that situation, you all, like mm. the people complaining are always the ones with the loudest voice, right? So, yeah. So what's what's, what's been your favorite stop so far? Like, out of all of the ones you went to, um, Thailand. Because it's the only one I got points at. <laughs> oh man! And it was, completely, and it was well completely based on <laughs> finishes. I mean, I mean, to be honest, getting getting something makes your experience better. Like, I think that's the biggest issue with like the tour stops. Mm. You travel around the world, and if you get nothing, you feel like so horrible. It's basically like wasting a week. And like, because I, the I'm gonna count so that. High... Hmm? Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. I was saying that because of the adrenaline being so high when you play. So after you lose, you cannot even like enjoy the city. You don't. You're not in the mood of anything for, until like you get back home, and then bam, you have to travel again to another tournament. So like, if you don't earn anything, then the tournaments feel bad. Also, the tournaments don't have that much of a prize pool in the first place because probably so much money goes into the organization of the tournament and producing it and like distributing it to the viewers, which is fine. Um, in my opinion, I, I know I'm jumping quickly through the subjects, but I think a very good way to fix it would be like making the tournaments semi-qualifier. So basically have a LAN for the people from that, either for, either from that region or from that country, and then have online qualifiers for people outside the country. So basically uh, 12 people qualify online. And if they qualify, maybe they even have to pay themselves for the travel. I don't think that would be a problem because I think if Blizzard would have to pay for everybody that qualifies, then it would be like yeah, too much. Way yeah, it would be a problem. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe like th- th- there could be an option. Like if you qualify, Blizzard pays for you, but like they take it out of your money because you have money guaranteed anyways for top 16. Like they take it out of your money, what they spend on your traveling. That could also be like an, a, a, another option. But basically I think um, they should have qualifiers for 12 people. And then day one of the LAN, they should have like a LAN for the locals only and they should not allow other people than locals to play and uh, qualify top uh, top four. And then next day they can do a 16 player tournament well produced and uh, uh, with the globals that fly in. And then everybody that plays uh, and travels uh, around the world goes back home with like money and points and then they will be happy. And then locals get to play the event and then they will be happy. And you, this way you combine the two, you combine having an event for the locals that they can enjoy not have to travel that much, play for their chance, and um, also like have a great event. Um, and uh, the globals don't have to like suffer for traveling and risking not getting anything. Because even players like Fino and Hunter is, I think, on half of the events or even more, they go back home with like nothing, like zero points. And that must feel bad, but okay, it must feel good when you get the points, but like, I don't know. Like when you lose, you also don't get shown on stream. So it's basically, as I said, just you waste one week. Mm, that's okay. Good point. Fino, you're going to counter all this? Yes. So my favorite, like, uh, tourist <laughs> experience was Se- Seoul, right? It was Korea. Oh. And Korea was right after Austin for me. And Austin, I got top four. And Korea, I went zero two <laughs> in 25 minutes. I, I lost zero three to green ship in 15 minutes and then zero three to boar in 10 minutes and it was my, it was my favorite tour stop 
Yeah, because you're right. You're riding the high. You're riding the wave. Like it's the equivalent of like winning. You win world championship. If you lose <laughs> next invitation, you don't care. You I say, mean, I don't know if it if it goes like that. But I just want to say that it's like top four in in a tournament. So like, if you're not top four and you go to like two tournaments and you go back getting nothing, then then it's well, like, yeah, that that would, that, would, that obviously had an effect. If I just like traveled like all the way after doing bad in. Like the other tournament, and I, I went zero two there. Obviously, I would be more depressed. But I'm just saying that it's it's not all about that at the end. I feel, and I had like a great time there. And it was basically because of what I said before that, like the the crowd was so nice there, and like the I feel like the organization was like pretty on point. And I just I just had a good time, you know, even because I I was mainly there as a like spectator kind of right, <laughs> because I just went zero two, so I was like out pretty early. So I was there like as a spectator and I had a good time. So like this, like people, pe like me included, like people say, complain like sometimes about like traveling too much, you know, being too many tour stops and stuff like that. But I think even if you don't do well, you can like, uh, I don't know, like uh, explore the city or like yeah. enjoy your travels. Like there are so many people who would like kill to do what I'm doing now, like travel around the world and stuff like that. So right, I don't want to but... get everything for granted right but but the problem is right um so this is uh, like our use suggestion uh, um is uh, also in my article that discusses like if that evaluates all the tour stops um but the problem is now that it's just not sustainable for so many players right the system is just not sustainable for so many players because like you are fortunate enough to be on a team radu is fortunate enough to be on a team but like for somebody who wants to break out it's impossible to sustain uh that living that lifestyle because yeah. you have a tour stop in seoul which is amazing and you can go there but the expectation the the expected value for a player there is so extremely low um yeah, with a price pool of twenty five k, I think Seoul and it's that, that, Seoul had like the best price pool. Yes, yeah. like, because I'm all so the weird. others, all the others are fifteen k. Yeah, which is you know, which is fine if you uh, have a top top sixteen, who uh, like sixteen players who know they they get a cut from that. Like rather suggested, like okay, you, you have players, you have the sixteen players, they can pay for the travels, and they know they're gonna get a certain cut. But if you have 256 players travel to Seoul to uh, to have a chance yeah. at a, a small piece of that 15k, and you have that throughout the year, you have that almost every other week. That you can't do that if you if you're not on a team. And even for teams, it's not sustainable to do that. And they'll be like, "Listen, man, you you gotta make a choice which one you go to." And then for players, it's like, "Okay, I I, I choose this one, and I hope to do well there." I, I, I'm so fired up. Like I want to talk about this. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I made some calculations. I had also talked to like a lot of players, and basically, like even if you're number one in points, like Hunter Ace or Fino, number two, with like a very similar number of points, um, I'm pretty sure if they wouldn't, uh, if, if they would have to pay for themselves with the money they earn from the tour stops, they would be on minus, or they would be like I don't know, plus one hundred dollars. Am I wrong? I would be negative. I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So like Fino is like one of the most successful players tour stop wise and he would be negative so basically who is losing the money is the teams that send the players Why i would for sure be negative there's like so, because like also now like top 16 in dreamhawks don't get anything and now i i know that because like board made top 16 in two events and got like nothing oh man uh, yeah and then i made top 16 in Tough. tours and i got nothing yeah. and I, yeah. I only got money from like top four in austin i think yeah but basically what i'm trying to say is like you get points and you either lose money or your team loses money. What, what do you get back or what does your team get back? Exposure. But you don't even get that much exposure back because like if you lose, you're not even going to be on stream. And like if you win, unless you win the tournament, how many times are you going to be well, on stream? Well, I mean, we get exposure because we go to all the tournaments. We've got so many points. Where... Oh, oh, your mic oh, is... Uh, oh, your mic I think my, my, your mic went off. Think, yeah, if you know, I think your mic just... But to, to make a joke, we are talking about this exposure thing and Sixo is like making a joke that I want to paraphrase and quote. Sixo is saying, try going to a store and buy something with exposure. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, the... But, okay, like, exposure yeah. might matter, but I don't think there's enough people watching 
and enough people caring about the tour stop circuit for exposure to matter. People mostly care about playoffs and the championships and worlds. The tour stop circuit, I don't think there's enough people involved in it uh, so that it matters that you have exposure within the circuit. And even the team standings, like, do we even have official standings yet? Like, I don't think yeah. they're properly well, advertised. And, like, I don't think uh, the teams are getting well, enough. The teams are not even shown on the broadcast, which I think yeah, is, like, yeah. so, well, I mean, that that's actually something that we're going to be talking about here. So, I mean, I think we're, we've gotten to the point where we're, like, transitioning into talking about about like yeah. you know the things that they they need to work on or, or what we'd like to see so um i think that <laughs> is my mic working by the way yeah it works now we can yeah, hear you. Yeah, oh, okay. fine, yeah so you bring up a good point the whole team standings you know and, and i think even just general standings and, and, and things like that i mean right now i, I feel like y you know the team standings literally like it's it's other third party sites that are actually doing the calculations for us to even see it a lot of times you know mm -hmm. and like here I this is the portal that that we have for HCT. This is this is for the US one. And I mean this is all we see. Like there there's not really a um a, you know like a, a full I mean here's the full like the schedules at least on here, but that this is all we see, you know, and it's it's not um I don't know. I feel like it's not even updated like just in a very timely fashion too. We still have like 2017 stuff still on here, right? Like that shouldn't even be here. And um, so I think one of the things that's missing right now is just like a full out portal. Like we still need that, you know, like we, we shouldn't have to, you know, when I'm preparing like my segments for each week for Value Town, I shouldn't have to literally dig through all of Reddit and Twitter and, and all these, you know, look, watching Twitch bots and all this stuff. I should just be able to go one place and, you know, have that, that, you know, help me kind of walk through all those things, right? If I, if I need to get caught up on it. So it, it's, yeah. you know, that's one thing that's really, They're really working missing. on it. They're, they're 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 busy developing a website dedicated to Hearthstone esports, but they've been doing that for a while now. So yeah, yeah, that, that's you know definitely we've heard that they've been working on it for a while. So I feel like that needs to be there. The team standing, you know, if the team standings are so important, then you know that should be posted like very very regularly. You know, it should be like once a month at the very very least. You know, like it, I forget which site it was that posted it last. It was like last week, right? And. Obviously, you know, your was, team. It was Team Genji's Twitter. Yeah. Uh -huh. who, who was it? it team was, Genji. Uh, yeah, yeah, Team Genji. Genji. That's what it was. Team Genji. Like, they're one of the teams actually ended up posting it. And I mean, I, I know F2K. I know you guys did the calculations early on too. One time, like, one, I think maybe yeah. the very first team standings. I think it was from F2K. So, um, you know, I mean, we did, but we never published it because we thought, like, I don't know, Blizzard might get mad, but. Then Team Genji posted it, so yeah, it's like... Yeah, well, like, th we wouldn't know <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. We wouldn't know how well you guys are doing, right? Like, we yeah. just kind of hear word of mouth that you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, but so yeah, like, that's definitely it was, one thing. It would be, like, so much more sustainable mm -hmm. if uh, they would have qualifiers because then the teams wouldn't have to spend that much money or the players wouldn't have to spend that much money on, like, traveling. But there is another issue with the qualifiers. They need to yeah. be properly run. Like, for example, I tried streaming the last qualifier for Tokyo, and there was like so much downtime because they were using Swiss that it's incredible. And they had Swiss into top eight cut into single elim for like no reason. And then uh, one guy just went like 8-0 and then he lost once and he didn't qualify. So like, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that is like the worst way to do it. Like if we have qualifiers, I really think they need to do a couple things. They need to not let everybody sign up. They need to have a requirement for signing up for the tournament. And they need to be like a bit less players. And the more fast format, maybe even a format that you can stream so that people like me can like also stream the events. Because I would really love to stream the qualifiers, but it's not really doable because there's too much downtime right now. Yeah. I yeah, the, the sustainability of it is is a, di a very difficult one because it's like you know, it's like a chicken and egg issue, right? Like um you know, even just pro sports, they would be losing, all the athletes would be losing money too if they didn't have sponsors and if all these events didn't have crazy amounts of sponsors too. Those come uh, from like, I, I don't agree with that. I really don't. What do you mean? Like, for sure, that's the case. Like, I, we, we like tennis sport. players and like golf players, they for sure would be losing money if it, if it, if it wasn't. I, because I don't know the prize pools in tennis, but I'm pretty sure they're bigger than like 3,000 if you're in a 200 player tournament. Well, yeah, but that's because there's like big sponsors and and you know like there's big sponsors sponsoring them individually. Like yeah, I mean, I mean the sponsors. You're saying if the if their tournaments would be worse, yeah. their, their their system wouldn't be sustainable. It doesn't make sense. No, what do you mean? Like I'm saying, like it's the external money that's 
and and the actual you know TV deals and things like that of the sport that uh, that end up supporting it. You know, I don't know yeah, how much because Hush doesn't have the these external deals and right, this right. Uh, TV thing. They should adapt and change the system to qualifiers because otherwise it's not sustainable. Did sure. they have like McDonald's advertising or something at the tour stop? Yeah, in Australia. Yeah, in Australia. So they don't do that in other events. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the, the what to do with Champions League, for example. Yeah, no, I think I think the 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 sustainability is it's kind of tied in with the amount of tour stops that are happening, right? Because there's so many of them. There's so many of them. I I I I, I just can't keep up. Yeah, uh, it's it's insane. There's a champion for everything, and I think um, uh, Froden and on a, on another podcast uh, they they talked about it as well. Um, and they said it's there's there's just too much. I there's a champion for everything, and you dilute not only the prize money but also the hype people have for Hearthstone, mm -hmm. you know, right? And that um, in the article with like uh, the players came to like a conclusion saying, all right, just have fewer tour stops, but make them more prestigious and run them better. Have a bigger prize pool for one tournament and make sure the players who qualify for that get a good cut, and that consistency can still be proven. But also that that the the people are like, oh, awesome! He was the tour stop winner of uh, spring, or for example, you know that you have like one bigger tournament, um, which increases sustainability for the players, uh, makes it more uh, enjoyable for. Uh, people like myself to watch because I watch everything of Hearthstone and I've been doing so for for three and a half years now. But this year, it's just I I can't keep up. Uh, wait, are we at the negative stuff yet? Because I think we yeah, we are. We are about even it. doing. Yeah, not we're there yet. Yeah, so no, we are there. We're, that's what I'm we're doing here. right now. That's what. We're, no, no that, that's what we're doing right now. That's exactly oh. what we're doing right now. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So I mean, points I, of improvements. Yeah, yeah. Points of improvement. So if you know, like, just just whatever you want to talk about right now if uh you're waiting on something oh uh, wait are we in the negative stuff now yeah because yeah yes. we've been talking yes. about <laughs> things that they have yes, so. like we've been talking about low oh, price money God. for with, with the negative things sound positive that's not a good sign man okay oh man <laughs> well like yeah i think as uh Tom said like the thing is that we have this thing now that's like too many tournaments and kind of like too much content for people to care right I think that, that that that's what happened like with uh, Dota 2 this year. They had like way ma like way more like uh, majors and stuff like that. So the tournaments weren't as important, right? And the people don't care that much. And if you have a tournament like every week, people are not gonna care that much about it, right? Yeah. And that, that's what happened in Dota 2. And now they're changing it the next year because they saw that it it wasn't really good because. Like, it doesn't build, like, the hype that you want to watch something. If you have something, like, available, like, every week or something, it's... Uh, for me, I don't think it's always, like, a good a good thing. And also, it's not great for players because they would have to travel so much. And, you know, it's it, it's not just a lot of money, but it's also, the, like, the time. Like, we just spend so much time traveling that we can't, like, do other things. For example, like, streaming or something like that. Okay, so let's compare it to last year, right? Last year we had all these online cups that literally happened like every day and and you pretty much had to do those as well as laddering and um you know, and this change this year, you know, they have the the whole tour stops. I mean, that was supposed to be an improvement upon la last year's online cups. Online clubs you could just sit at home, right? And do those all day and, and have just grind those. What's better? Like 2018 or 2017 in terms okay, of Okay, so I think the system this year is better than the last year, but because there are so many dates taken by the tour stops, there's almost like no invitationals. For, for, so for me personally, mm -hmm. it's a worse year because there's like almost no invitationals because there's no time to do them. Like I, don't, I, I, I think they need approval from Blizzard and I, I don't think Blizzard approves most of the invitationals because they conflict with like tour stops or they conflict with like whatever. So do you think of invitationals as a way like more of a way to generate revenue for yourself and income than the actual tour itself is well, that for him of course it is yeah well, because so if it's, it's it's not about that. right like, I mean, i'm asking an obvious question like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like you asked me like how i felt about the system overall and like the most enjoyment i get out of tournaments is probably from invitationals because you just get treated better than at the first stop and you have like higher chances to win yeah. because at the first yeah. stop, 
you need these like gigantic high rollish scores like to make it out of Swiss you need like seven to eight one you need like seven one in, in an invitational you play like a group stage and then you play single limb it's like way higher chances to do well um that's for example like the main reason why Pavel stepped down is because he realizes the chances of him doing well in 200 or 300 people tournaments is super low Pavel was like really good at Hearthstone when you play a 16 player tournament because he knew how to handle every game separately and maximize his chances but when you play this gigantic yeah. tournaments it's like almost a, a titanic thing even for like the best players in the world yeah and you know again playing devil's advocate again is you know like we it wasn't that long ago where we were saying that we wanted every single tournament to be swiss uh, you know like mm. that's what people wanted <laughs> like people swiss thought is, that swiss is good if you make it well like i don't think anybody does swiss well like they they need to make it so that you can lose twice and not have to win like 1,000 times and still make it. Like, I think 7-2 is a good requirement. Um, so, so you're basically saying that tiebreakers are bad. They should make it clean, but they should make it something like 6-2 you qualify or 7-2 you qualify. That's yeah, like yeah, the yeah, tiebreakers are bad, yes. Yeah, but you wouldn't know how big your bracket is after that, right? Like, I mean, there has to be some some semblance of planning so that you know you know how many matches you're going to broadcast and things like that right so um i mean i guess they could add another round if you add another round you'd be adding a lot of players right to to the um the actual playoffs or whatever of the, of the, the event the thing is like one round i don't think matters that much like it's number of players plus rounds they could switch triangle it and find like the sweet spot but i think for the tour stops it just qualifies is the way to go as for the playoffs I don't know. My issue with the playoff, for example, was that playoff felt like a true stop with a lot more on the line. But it felt like a true stop. Like the venue was super noisy. I didn't like it that much. Like I'm probably not gonna go back there. You can ask uh, Matthias. It, and it, like, I don't know. It, it was just like not the proper place to play Hearthstone, in my opinion. And uh, focus at the same time. But I'm pretty picky on these kind of things. So maybe my opinion doesn't matter as much. But um, I don't know. I wish we'd have like better venues, maybe less venues. Um, another thing with playoffs is that there were like too many, too little rounds. For example, I was very upset that Thais went five two and he didn't make it. And like five two is like a really good score. Like at least make one more round, give him a chance. Like he had to go six one with the tiebreakers that he had or bust. Like five two, it's. It, it feels bad. And this tournament is like only once every three months or four months or something like that. Like, I think it should be a more grand tournament. Like, this tournament is three days and DreamHack is four. So like, what? Or actually, mm -hmm. is it two days and DreamHack is three? I don't know. But yeah, DreamHack is basically yeah. longer than this tournament. It, it, and this tournament is supposed to be like the most prestigious thing. Right, yeah. but um, if I can, can uh, go back to what you asked earlier, Chris, uh, is whether you want 2017 or 2018 system. I think what Blizzard has done this year, a more hands-on approach is definitely good with organizing stuff and making sure more stuff is, is, is done well. But I think they've just overdone uh, the amount of things they want to they, they, they uh, have happening, right? So um, Che Chao, uh, the, the franchise lead for Hanson Esports, has said that he what he wants to see ideally is this migrating group of players traveling around the yeah, world, competing absolutely. and stuff. But it's it's just it's just too much now, right? And um, he he also said like for example he actually gave the example back then of dog. Um, he said like if he can do well in a tournament and combine it with stream, that would be ideal, right? But now, well, yeah. yeah, but it's 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 not always impossible, but it's been made impossible because of the frequency of the tournaments and and the way they are run. Yeah, I mean, Dog didn't go to tour stops. He I mean, made it. He's ladder. in playoffs, right? So it's... he made he made it through ladder. Yeah, yeah and he, like even like Thais even like Thais also made it. Uh, I think mostly through ladder, right? Uh, to yeah, but you're playing. saying that it's great they made more tournaments because Dog made it, but he made it through the ladder. So I don't think the tournaments yeah. matter that much. I mean, the tournaments no, no. Have, the tournaments have always supposed to have been an option. You know, like I I think the point of it was that you could go traveling. And, and you know have that land experience you know try to gain exposure from that sort of thing or you could just stay at home and ladder right like you 
you kind of have both. I, I feel like that's what they gave you. Where last year you didn't really have an option to really go to that many events, like you know. Um, and they they set this this year up to have that that sort of um, dynamic. You know, you could kind of choose what type of player you wanted to be. Uh, and um, you know, you guys clearly have been part of that touring. You know, the group of players, which. It's kind of cool too, you know. It's like I, I enjoy seeing you guys tweet, you know, a, bu a bunch of you guys together, and you know, just that that whole aspect that um, you know we've been missing, on, honestly, from Hearthstone. You know, seeing the players together more often than just like once or twice a year, you know. So um, I, I think from that standpoint, I think it's it's been successful in having this type of tour, like an actual true true tour. But it's just the financial the financial aspect of it just doesn't match up right now and it's different than a sport too because you know this is a developer this is somebody that owns the sport so they they have added benefits from even just not making they don't even have to make money from this right if anything they lose money from this and so yeah. um you know they put more money into it but the real question is do they have to put even more money into it you know, i don't like, think that can solve it like the thing is they would have to put an astronomically uh, higher amount with how many tournaments they're having to make everybody happy. Like, yeah. I don't really know. There's like a lot of things that they need to do better in order to like please everybody. Mm -hmm. Like from my own perspective, I don't think I was ever this depressed in my entire life. Like I'll give Jeez. up on tour stuff because I don't think it's wow. good for my mental health. Yeah. Like I, I, I literally like at the beginning of the year, I thought that I'm like pretty strong mentally. I can handle a lot mm -hmm. of things. Now I don't know. Like I'm, 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 I'm super done with that's, that's probably because you're not getting results, though, right? I don't think it's that much because of the other things. And that happens when you don't get results and you're a good player. Like a lot of yeah. I mean, are... I'm not getting the results I expect, and like I feel like I don't even have the chance to get the results because these tournaments mathematically like don't really make sense. I so mean, you I... do have a chance, though. Like for example, like. Us, like as F2K, we've talked like every tournament we went to. I think it's very possible to like do well. I mean, yeah, if you send like four players, one of them does well, but like I, I go alone and well, like, we send we send three players and like mo like most of the times two of us talk. So I don't I don't think it's that impossible as you make it sound. And there have, there have been a lot of players who are like doing pretty well consistently in tour stops. So I don't think that's like a problem. In, in my opinion, at least. Sure, I was just like telling about my point of view, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I, I'm like different. Like they shouldn't ca they shouldn't cater ACT to me. It's fine. I was yeah, just saying my. I mean, yeah, I don't think you're the only one that's that's you know struggling with it because there's only so many people that can benefit from going to you know a stop right. There's only so many people that win money. There's only so many people that get points. So um, yeah. you know, it, it really points to just. You know, getting back to like having less events, getting back to, I mean, do we need to try to scale it down? Do we need to change the structure of it? You know, like we still have a structure that's very uh, conducive for anybody getting into the tour. You know, like as long as you can afford it, you can go, right? And there's no other restriction as to who can go to these stops. But is that, is that how you want it? Is that oh, like, right, right. Is that's what is I mean. No, that's, that's yeah. exactly what they want. They want yeah. the storyline of anybody can win the world championship. And I think that that makes it very, very difficult to to mm. have these type of events that, you know, sports don't do that. Sports, you know, they have qualifiers. They have this whole, like, you know, even like League of Legends, they have Challenger League, right? They have all these, like, developmental leagues that kind of feed into the the, the main, um, yeah. you know, tour or league or whatever, you know, the, the, the f format is. In Hearthstone, mm. we don't have that. There's no such thing. And it, you know, it's a little better in the definition of what a professional Hearthstone player is now. Like, you can maybe kind of put a definition on it. But really, there still isn't one. Like, I, I, still, I, don't, I still don't know how to define, like, what a, a real professional Hearthstone player is. And, and if I were to tell isn't somebody it, random, it's like, how do you, like, how do I, you know, designate you two as professional players? Isn't it like a player who basically gets paid to do what he does? Yeah, so right. what a professional man. Yeah. Is it, though? Like... I mean, is it just somebody on a team? Then they're just considered a pro? No, no, no. Yes. They need to get paid, right? Because they, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people. What if they're a streamer? Are they a professional? Oh, yeah, then, then it's, no, your profession they're... is to play Hearthstone, right? And they're like a professional streamer, like streaming. They're paper. a professional streamer, yeah. They, but because they make money on Twitch. I don't know how much Yeah, but my, my point is, is that if somebody random came up to me and asked, like, um, can you point me to like where I can find all the professional players? 
I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to like literally sift through like all the different, you know, like streams, maybe go to each one of these team sites and, and you know what I mean? Like there, there's no actual tour, you know, like you guys aren't part, a member of a tour. You guys just go to these tournaments and yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Like there, there's yeah. no designation in that. And that, I think that's another, a problem. Like another problem, like for example, how can you get pro like, I was asked, uh, I was asked like two or three months ago by like a uh, Romanian, uh, Stefan Sim. You probably like know him if you're from the Romanian community. He was up for voting in HGG. He didn't make it personally. He's like a very talented player. Uh, the thing is, he asked me like, what can I do to go pro? Like, what would you recommend? And I was thinking of that because I didn't know how to answer. Like, I cannot tell him go to tour stops because I don't think like he can afford going to tour stops. Unless you, like, even if you win every tour stop, you probably go on minus. Okay, okay. Yeah. If, you do, if you win every tour stop, you don't go on minus. But like going to twist ups is not really an option for like people that want to break into the scene. So then what do you do? Like stay home four months, ladder, hope you make playoffs. And then playoffs is like a tournament with seven rounds. You can go five, two, not make it. Then yeah. what, what do you do? Like there's no, there's no path to going pro. You basically have to do it like part-time. I mean, or something. you just have to be very good at the game. Like, I don't know what you mean. If someone is yeah. very good at the game, he will be noticed. And you don't tell me that you're not going to get the higher You have to put the time into the game to be good. And yes, no... you have to put time. That's what we did, right? That's what I did. I'm pretty sure no, that's what but, you did. No, I, I think the thing, though, if you know, is that, like, th there's a reason why, um, you know, professional leagues are set up the way they are. And that's because you have the same people together all the time. You know, like, as content or as a product, you have these people always together. And that way, you know, you can sell it, you know, like, as a sponsor. You, know, you can actually sponsorships or whatever you can kind of sell that you have this group of players that are always together now if you have like you know you don't have that set of players it's just more about just the tournament uh it's just harder to do that you know that that's really the point that i'm trying to make with just this whole tour thing it's not so much about like you know you guys as professional players and who's professional or not it's just that it's hard to actually present a product an actual hct product to something that might you know be able to help financially support it but you know more if you don't have something that's like consistent and sustainable you know you have this this what's like a u.s open you know like an open tournament mm -hmm. and that storyline you know it is like once in a blue moon it'll work you know it's that some guy that's you know that was you know yesterday was doing something completely different ends up winning the hct you know championship i mean they they kind of want this tour at the same time they want that that storyline to happen too and and i think that's just conflicting you know and i think it's hurting it, it's just hard yeah. it's hard to maintain but that's both. also because of the nature of the game right the consistency yeah that's because of the nature of the game I yeah think. like okay. like the, sure. the consistency in tennis uh, is like a 95 percent win rates for the serena williams's roger federer's and and those in consistency in Hearthstone, you're you're pretty dang good are some player if in tournaments all year you get 65 percent then you're doing extremely well because because that's just the nature of yeah, a card that, game there is a huge difference that, can i can i add one more thing to fina like um okay let's do like a mind exercise let's assume you have your <laughs> skill set but you're not popular at all and you don't have uh, your team fate to karma supporting you what do you do to break into the scene with your current skill set, let's assume that you play as well as you do now, even though I'm pretty sure that you play as well as you do now because you polished those skills uh, over the months of playing the game at a high level already. But let's oh, assume yeah. your current skill set. Let's assume you're like one of the best players in the world. What, what do you do? I, I, I would be first in points and some team would be uh, how? Yeah. Oh, because like, no, because I, I, I because what I would do uh, with Radu's example is scrape together all my money to go to a tour stop and hope I do well there. And then, like, let's assume you don't do well, because like. But it's not only the tournaments, though. That's the thing. You can do online. In, you can do well in qualifiers. Like Hunter is qualified for like the tour stop, right? And he got second there. And it's like, there was like one qualifier for Europe. The others are global. Yeah, that that's also another thing that I want to get to when you get to more problems. But, also, like, <laughs> also like tournaments. Tournaments are on the Americas, so like. There's a lot of really good players who don't who, who cannot afford to have a full collection on free servers. <laughs> Like the guy I was talking yeah. about doesn't have a collection outside of Europe. So for him, the, he could play... I, I used qualifier. to not have a collection on any server. One. One qualifier on Europe, you know. One. I used to have collection on only one server when I became, like, relevant, kind of. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it's possible. Like, if you just... I, you, you became relevant in a time where there wasn't this system and you got into free to karma, 
uh, this year when this system is beginning. Like I'm trying to say that in the current system, the only way you can go pro is to stay, like the only sustainable way to not spend all your money that you earned in a previous life and to be able to go pro, even if you have like a very good skill set, is to stay home, grind ladder and hope you do well in playoff. Like you cannot tour stop, there's not enough qualifiers to like play from a home. So you don't have a way to break out. That's what I'm complaining so, about. So one, you know, one thing we talked about, right, yeah. was that one thing we talked about was that if you didn't have team support, right, you'd probably be in the negative in terms of going to these tour stops and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. you know, one thing already you or Radu you said was that you know it it's not good for the teams, right? Like just this whole thing. So I guess the question is, is like, well, can teams sustain it? Like, will teams want to no. continue doing this? I don't no. think so. Yeah. Like, I think if he keeps going like this, they will not be able to sustain it in, like, one year and a bit. Definitely I mean, not, like... It depends how much, like, how much they, like... Because I think they, they're going to do some things about the team league, right? I don't think it's just going to be the, you know... The, this yeah. is the ranks, like, we just get it, let's just see it. We don't do anything else with it. I think they're going to do some things with the team. Yeah, I do too. Like, standings. Mm -hmm. But, so, but the, thi the, the problem is, uh, Fina, like, I... I I followed Hearthstone for so long, and uh, back when I was still working for for Go to Gamers, we 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 also talked a lot about. Listen, Hearthstone needs to do something for the teams because that's the, those are the people who send players everywhere, right? Those are the the driving force behind the economy of the game, and for so long, nothing's happened. The best team events we've had to date, still far, are the Trinity series. That's that's the best. The things that ever happened for Hearthstone teams. Well, yeah, but but we still need to wait and see what happens with this. But team. what are you waiting for? Because because there's 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 so many things. Like we we've, we've been promised that uh, this year they would focus on Hearthstone. I mean, they, have, they haven't even put up the team standings yet, so I'm assuming they have something in mind, right? Right, I mean, but I, why I, haven't they put up team what? standings? That's what they promised. Don't ask me. I, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, I'm so saying... why are you defending them and saying, oh, we have to wait no, and see? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying <laughs> right, they will do something about it, and I'm sure about it. So I don't know. I mean, the, are you complaining about the fact that you have to wait? Like, yeah, know, that's how things go with you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so okay, like, like in terms of the team thing, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I think that you know, doing the first step to to doing this this whole team concept for HCT is brand new. So them not going, you know, full out balls out, putting a ton of money into it. I, I can kind of understand that because we didn't actually have that many teams starting this year, you know, or even before they even announced that. We didn't. I, is I mean, there something wrong with Sarman's mic, or is it just oh, me? I heard. Oh, is it a little crazy? Is it a little uh, crazy? Yeah, it's crackling, crackling a bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll have to try to uh, do something about it. But um. Yeah. So um, for me, with the with the team thing, I, I feel like this year is step one for the teams. Like I think they're going to put some more money into it. You know, next year probably. And I mean, I think it's kind of cool. Like, what if we ended up having like, what if HTT just turned into a team thing? Uh, that that could it be one. That could be pretty no. interesting. Like, There's no, no way, you know, like, HT is always about the players. But mm. as, again, like, I didn't get, like, a good answer on, like, how can I really talent, like, let's say top 10 in the world. But again, I don't think you can be top 10 in the world, like, naturally born. You have to, like, work hard. And you wouldn't work hard, like, instantly before you already, like, get the tournament experience. So, like, I'm really, like, other than going, other than qualifying for playoffs and trying your chance in playoffs, I don't see a way uh to get to get to the pro level like i'm yes. reading, I'm yes. reading yes. and people are saying that uh, content creation until you find a team okay and then you can go pro but i well, don't know this is, this is the root of another problem that I, I wanted to mention like for a while now it's the fact that for some reason they only give like online qualifiers to like na for example and then only you they just do like tour stops like italy or apac they do tour stops like uh seoul right I don't understand, like, this is also not fair for the team standings. Because, for example, like us as F2K, we're like competing against Temple Storm. Temple Storm is like second in points. And they get more online qualifiers and they also get to attend the tour stops that we're attending. So basically, is that they're getting like more tour stops than we are and more chances to get points. So this no, is. A, the, this is the, I, I, for, the, for the article uh, I wrote, I. I made the calendar of the HCT events and um, like it says so far including DreamHack uh, Summer each region has had an equal amount of tour stops all have had the same amount however no yeah the thing how, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. however uh, in, in Europe 
one event had online qualifiers into uh, invites. Um, yes. And then uh, Americas had two and Asia Pacific had three. So that's that's incredibly unfair because... Yes, uh, that is know. unfair. That, yeah. that, that, that's specifically unfair. It's, I think it's only unfair when it comes to team standings, all right? Because it doesn't matter, like... I mean, it's also like when it comes to people breaking out. Well, it's like, it's unfair. I mean, if you're gonna say it, everybody like has equal chance, for somebody it's to unfair, break out no in the scene, right? Yeah. 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 Like, of course, we are only halfway in the season, and they still they still have uh, half of the year to balance it all out and give give Europe the other the like. But like, like but flip. it can't really balance out though because the season the, the first season of team standing ends soon, right? And like, if if board didn't do well in Copa, for example, it had to qualify through the the global qualifier. Well, mm. well, Mazi had like three qualifiers to play, or yeah. Seyan had three qualifiers to play, or Amnesia had three qualifiers to play. It would have been unfair, right? And I, yeah. I honestly don't see how that is a thing. They should just have the equal amount of tour stops online and offline in every region to be fair. Yeah, First I agree season. with that. Yes. They're, they're, it should be equal. That that's. And, kind of and, and again, think, uh, put yourself in the shoes of like a really good player who has only one account on his main region. Like what if his region doesn't get enough qualifiers? What does he do? Just wait uh, one year and like uh, try to break out at the end of the year? Like, yeah, this is also the case with some EU players. I know a lot of EU players that are really good and they only have an EU collection and they can't travel. And yeah, as I was saying, there are no EU qualifiers. They only have the, the Germany tour stop and they only have lands. How is... Yeah, yeah like, it's not a sustainable way to break out. Like yeah. qualifiers solve most of this. Like if every tournament would have qualifiers, as I said, and like land for the local people and global qualifiers for like the, the other 12, then it would be like way better for everybody because I, I mean, also they, they should be like uh, super accounts for people playing in these qualifiers, I think, because then you could allow people that don't have collections on all the servers to play in the tournaments without having to spend like all their life earnings. And like, I think a system should have a way for like a really good player to be able to have the opportunity to break out. And now I don't think there's that opportunity because as I said last year, I was thinking, why don't more Romanians play Hearthstone? It's like a very good way of making a living if you just like do decently. But now I'm like, nobody can break out. I, I, I wouldn't recommend going pro to anybody because it's just, you have to stay home for three months grind or, or four months in the second and third season, grind ladder, go to playoffs, hope you do well in playoffs. Other than playoffs, if you have like no qualifiers in your region and you cannot afford traveling to lands, how are you going to get the points? So you can only get the points from ladder. Yeah, if also you have to go to playoffs, you also kind of have to spend money, right? Because there's also... The yeah, problem. you have to spend the money for the playoffs, but yeah. you get the money back anyways, because there's like good price pool. Yeah, but some people might not have the money to like... Uh, to to spend, upfront right? it? Yeah, yeah, sure. But like, yeah, imagine if you don't have the money to upfront it, like what do you do? So like, but that's but own, that's gotta be part of it though. I mean, you can't assume that if you want to become a professional horse or you just want to become a professional athlete or anything that you there's no investment in it either. I mean, there's obviously time investment, but you know, a lot of times there's money investment too. That that just comes with the territory. Right? But like, like some you know, of the best football players in the world started from nothing. They had the opportunity because there is a better system in football. But we, in, in we really shouldn't compare, we really shouldn't compare Harston to like tennis. Uh, <laughs> and football like well, no but like what i'm saying is like if you if you're really good and you don't have the money to upfront traveling and even like really good in is not really the good. same with really good in tennis and in football is what i'm trying to say no no yeah if you're really good in tennis or football you can like use your skill better horizon is like yeah. a game of numbers you need to play more tournaments to like even like give yourself a chance there's nothing like you get for I granted. Mean, like, let's just, okay, compare it to a poker player then, right? Like, a poker player has to invest the same amount of money to go travel to a tournament and ha runs the same risk of coming back with nothing. And, I mean, but you, you kind of go into it knowing that you have to do that. Like, it's not supposed to, ha like, be accessible to somebody who doesn't want to spend any money. Like, you know, not risk any money. It, you know, you're not to, it's to, to, um, expect Hearthstone to be like that I, I think that's a, a bit unreasonable you know just any literally anybody like doesn't have to invest a dime just it's pure time and you can you know possibly succeed in Hearthstone no, no you can't and that's just it that's just the reality of it right I mean you can play so, poker online and make money online in Hearthstone you cannot make money online like you can only play ladder online and also in mm -hmm. poker okay. you get like a better return for how much you spend going to an event 
let's say like the buy-in is 1K and like traveling there is like 1K. If the buy-in is 1K for like 200 people, they will probably have a price pool of like 190K. Here, like you pay 1K for like traveling yeah. and like the, the tournament price pool is 15K. But in poker, like even if you have to spend a bit more for the buy-in uh, and like it's buy-in plus traveling, the price pool is like 20 times higher or 30 times higher. And it's distributed to like, uh, I don't know, top 100 or something. I don't know exactly. I'm not uh, into poker at all. Like the only poker I played is with like friends from high school. Yeah. But like, I'm just... Oh, just high school tweeted that. about the matchmaking. Hmm? Uh, did, like they com did, did they actually comment about it? Oh, we got we to actually we look at this. A nice yeah. feedback regarding blitz and matchmaking. We'll be sharing some information about that and plans going forward very soon. Oh, okay. So they, so they, they tweeted this, I guess? Yeah. Okay, so... Two minutes ago. Also, like, in, in poker, tournaments are probably easier because I, I think it's easier for uh, pro players to outplay uh, non-pro players. But now because of size like H's replay, everybody can edit a lineup, and I'm pretty sure they have, like, very good chance against a pro. Okay. Yeah, here's that tweet, by the way, guys. They, they just literally just tweeted, so we can... Okay, so... Yeah. Yeah. We, we at least got something, which is, like, wait soon for an explanation. <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's better than that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, there are not those, those are the, the change. <laughs> <laughs> They're watching. No. <laughs> Announcing oh, the apology. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. No, but um, okay. Well, I think we talked a lot, obviously, about what what kind of different formats, and I think they're all. You know, I think all these things are are great points. I mean, I think hearing about you know the struggles too, and and what what you know, um we're potentially looking at at least with the ch changes we made after last year we still need to make some more changes and you know i think online qualifiers uh, yeah i think that's a good idea i don't think that solves everything i mean yeah, i still i, I, I still think we if i, I still think still, we still add to that okay. because online qualifiers they they are like hyped up right they're like okay cool and then you can qualify but i do see a downside to the competitive integrity because in uh, whether, you, whether you'd like to admit it or not. And I don't think any of the guys below are act maybe actively doing that because they, they trust their own skill set enough. And they're, But a lot of players, when playing online qualifiers, are in calls with their friends screen sharing. That's what happens. Because the more people you have uh, looking at your screen, the higher chance you get to... That's, to... Yeah, that's, that's good. That be. happens. Yeah, I, I know it does. Yeah, so that's... That's something that's, that's very something... difficult to police. I mean, you'd have to run like a third party client or something, you know, like guarantee a third party client being run that I, I don't know. I just don't think that's possible. Yeah, I, no, I think it's, it's not, very it's hard to police. Yeah. Yeah, but the, I don't I, think I, I can... it's an issue that much. Like, I don't know. Like, I think I play worse with other people. For example, look at Trinity series. Like, I think <laughs> play, played worse together than like I would play on my own. And then each one of us will just gotta go. We're talking about the, the Mech Shaman the match again. Or are we, uh... <laughs> no, like I think I think it's actually like hard to play together with somebody. Like whenever I play these tournaments, I either stream them or play them alone. I don't understand how right. people play together that's, and the they do well playing together. That's that's not an argument, right? That yeah, for you it doesn't happen. It just shouldn't. It shouldn't. I, mean, I think in general people play worse when they play together. Like every single time I see somebody playing with somebody else, they usually play together because they play around too many things. But I might be wrong on this. Well, it's yeah, it could I be one. Of, I, I think you. I think you're looking at it from a being a good play, like a really, you know, obviously a super good player. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously going to be some situation where there's there's just a weaker player, you know, and, and he happens to be with good players that are on, you know, Skype or something like that, and so he's he's but benefiting from that. Like even yeah, two good players can argue. Like as I said, like I think no, no, no. You're not I think from the wrong I think right? yeah, I think, definitely. Like look, yeah. look for example, look at the Hearthstone Global Games last year, right? Who won? Czech Republic, and why? Because of Stancivka. It's 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 nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, come on. come on, man. Like everybody is a really good player. Yeah. Okay. All right. So like, but the people are like, okay, Stancivka is the leader, right? And he's like, look, look at the entire roster. Were they like on average? Were they if you, if you average the roster, was Czech Republic the best team? No, 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 no. By far not. But they had know. a good leader. They had a good leader. And you can do the same in online qualifiers. Like, for example... No, the, the, the thing is, though, I think Czech Republic was, like, a, a good team. Uh, it's, uh, no, like, they, yeah, were team. The they, they, were, they were a good team. I'm not saying they weren't a good team, but they were not the best team. 
I mean, it doesn't matter because the best team doesn't always win. Yeah, the best team doesn't yeah, always win. I think win. preparation matters yeah. super much in like a format like global games. Yeah. And like Jarla and Pokrovac are also like insanely good players too. But uh, other than that, I don't know. I was saying like in those qualifiers, the pe the persons that you're playing to already lost, right? Because like otherwise they would play themselves the qualifier. So like they cannot be that fantastic. But even if two really good players are playing together, I don't think that's like that much. No. Of Rather, they are saying that like a bad player can play with a good player, and then the good player can like boost. Yes, the bad but, but, but why would a good player like not play for himself then? Because he lost or something. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, sure, sure, sure. But it's impossible to police it. So why are, why are we even talking about this? Yeah. Hey, yeah. you were saying it didn't matter. <laughs> you were saying it didn't matter. Okay, okay, it matters. Okay, it matters. Sorry. All right. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing. Like I, I probably me and like the Hearthstone team too. We have some ways to like we have some we think of some things to fix problems, but then we don't think of the consequences of those. Like now I'm thinking, wow, if every tournament, if every tour stop would be online, it would fix like so much, so many of the problems. But as Matthias uh, just like said, th there's like so many problems that will start. Like they will be like, you cannot police people playing together with other people or like using deck trackers and stuff like that. And um, you can also have the problem of uh, too many people uh, signing up in these tournaments and like uh, the really good players not catching a spot or just being too many tournaments or wacky format and then not enough uh, not enough good players qualifying or not or the players not qualifying consistently like i can see a lot of the problems already if we would have qualifiers so like the qualif i think the, the the best way to be every two step has qualifiers but the qualifiers are run perfectly which is not going to happen because <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> right that's yeah, and yeah I, it's like yeah, yeah. so and i i think another thing about online qualifiers um and i think uh, fino also still wanted to address this earlier is how they are split because um currently um if for example a tournament's happening in europe europe will have its own uh, specific qualifier for europe only and then uh, three global qualifiers However, the European players can also play in all those global qualifiers. Now, in Latin America, it's even it's even worse because uh, Latin America has uh, what like mm -hmm. one Latin America specific, then uh, two global, and then Americas. I think I think that's how that's how it's split, which is massively. Uh, favored for the region itself. Now, I'm not saying that a little bias is is bad because I definitely. I uh, see the value. Wait, of, what do uh, we have four? Huh? They get four chances, the Latin American players? They can play the global one too, basically. Yeah, if, if, if the tournament's in your region, you can play in everyone. So, how many, how many like, uh, chances do they get if you're from Latin America? Four. four. And if you're not, one. Yeah. What? Yes, so that's that's another problem, right? And uh, what what I was uh, saying is that a, a little bias isn't bad. I think it's nice to get, like, especially if you split the tournaments evenly across all regions, that you give uh, all all regions some extra opportunity. But this way, it's just okay. Your tournament, the, like you have four four times as many chances as everybody else, and I think that's mess that's unfavoring the skilled players who you consistently want to uh, qualify for those tournaments. Okay, so <laughs> I think now that I can I can say how I think they should do it. Like if they okay. want to have qualifiers, okay. they can do the following thing. They can do just three qualifiers and have a direct LAN. So cool. out of those three qualifiers, two should be only for the people outside of that region. One should be for everybody in case somebody is, for example, from Europe but like, cannot afford traveling to the LAN. They should also get the chance to qualify. So okay. Okay. two, just people outside of the region. One, fully global. Everybody can play in it. And then have a direct LAN. These three qualifiers qualify 12 players. The direct LAN plays like one or two days in advance, maybe like not even broadcasted. Mm, okay. And four players of that direct LAN qualify. And then the four players play with the 12 players in a 16-player tournament, which is like broadcasted on Twitch TV on uh, the channel of choice. All right, what I what I got out from what Rad <laughs> said, even though I didn't listen to anything, yeah. is that okay. I go. mean there has to be a way that they can improve. They can they can like for sure improve if they get like I don't know. Maybe they need to get like more <laughs> like passionate people that like are actually <laughs> I mean, really. I, I, I think right. There's no way that there have to be better ways. 
I mean, Radu is passionate and he can, yeah. he can probably improve it by himself. There's no way they can't find people who are, you know. I, mean, I, I, I think that that actual qualifier you know, system, Radu, is, it, is a pretty good idea. I have many ideas. I, think, I think that's actually pretty good. Is that, like, I don't think of the consequences. Like, there probably are some downsides to my ideas too, but I can think of ideas for like every single bad spot. Like, I'm trying to just I, like, suggesting I, reversing it in a way that like, uh, instead of being one uh, global and three local qualifiers, you kind of have three global and then you have a local LAN and then you combine having the local LAN, which is what Blizzard wants to engage the local audience also with the global qualifier. And I yeah, don't I, really see that I, downside in this format. I mean, I'm just not a huge fan. I mean, again, you have to, you have to really focus on what you want this to be. You know, like, what do you want this HTT to be? Because, you know, the 16-man tournament, I mean, that's that's definitely not, um, I don't know. I, I feel like the 16-man tournament, in, in the end, is, the qualifier system is actually good for it to end up that way. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Like, they want this kind of touring thing, though, right? So... Mm. You you have so, to you have to can, you have to figure yeah. out what you want to be first. Okay, like it can be a tuning thing. The, every okay, so I need to gather my thoughts. Sorry, um, <laughs> it can be a tuning thing <laughs> for people from that region because if you are from that region, you're gonna have a tournament with two or three hundred players to play for the four spots. So it can be a tuning thing for people from that region, but not for the globals. The globals have to qualify. But if each region will have tournaments, each region will have a chance to also play these two hundred tournaments. Uh, 200 player tournaments on top of like having the chance to play the qualifiers. Okay, I see. Like, I don't are, are the users yeah. make it a hybrid? Make yeah, it make yeah, all yeah. Tournaments a hybrid. Or just at least like, have it focus within the regions, right? Like, like that, I, think, that sort of thing. I think a hybrid is like the only sustainable way to have it because yeah. we clearly see the current way is not sustainable, at least for the players. I'm not sure how it is for Blizzard. Yeah. But like, and, and for the teams, like, I think the teams are taking the biggest hit, bigger than the players. But like, I'm saying, like, by making it a hybrid, they kind of solve most of the issues. So just think about it. So 300 player LAN for people from that region, four make top 16, and then have global qualifiers run previously for the other 12 people. They can run, like, two global qualifiers for, like, uh, people outside of that region and, like, not let people from the region play and have one qualifier where everybody can play. So people that from the region that cannot afford traveling to the LAN for their mm. chance of qualifying, can also play it yes. from home. Yeah, I think I think that's yeah. definitely a good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm, that's. I don't really see downsides with this. You, you combine the LAN aspect, you combine the qualifier aspect, you give everybody a fair shot. Like I just, it's also sustainable money-wise. You don't have to travel unless you qualify. It's better for the teams. You can also, if the qualifiers are well ran, you can stream the tournament. Yeah. The only downside I see is if the tournaments are ran badly, like. If they would have like perfectly ranked qualifiers, this would be like the best season. Right, but that's that's something you can have at every other event as well, right? If, I mean, if, running like, running qualifiers, I don't think you know that that can running good qualifiers that can happen. I mean, I don't think that's you know that, that that's a, a huge challenge. You know, we, a lot of people have run qualifiers at this point, so um, I feel like that's if that's the biggest challenge, that's not you know that's not a problem. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think that's a good, pretty good idea. I think it's better. It's definitely better than than what we're talking about right now. And um, you know, you got to solve the financial problem right now because mm -hmm. it it's not even good for the you know people like Fino, which is kind of crazy. You know, and that that's uh, it's, it's indicative of a lot. It's still very top heavy at the end. Like somebody is going to win a ton of money at the end. You know, and that that like is supposed to make up for a lot of, a lot of what happened during the mm -hmm. year. I mean, you know? the most money I've got is from basically getting top eight in. Um, that's like the only like real amount of money that I got, and I haven't even got it. It's like the the yeah. top eight in HCT, right? Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, like I don't I don't expect to get any money from source those basically. So like you don't even get rewarded for being as consistent as Fino is another issue. Like yeah. like if Fino doesn't do well in playoffs, he doesn't really get rewarded. Like playoffs is the jackpot. Like you play <laughs> playoffs if you make top four, you have already like a lot of uh, money secured. And you have a chance at Worlds, which is like the biggest jack jackpot of them, of them all. But like, it's it's a bit weird of a system that you just like hope you hire all that one tournament. 
which is I mean, it's, not, it's not only that like you can also get money i don't know from like the master thing i don't know how that will turn out probably not okay, so well. we talk about master thing let's go <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay. oh, no. so now we're finally also, talking about the tier thing right the whole master tier thing okay go go for it all right Rodney, know, like, you got I, you I, go I, ahead I feel, I feel I try to be constructive and I feel bad like talking bad about the system but there's like so many things wrong that I feel like they could be better but it's hard to make them better I I don't know I, I just feel like I maybe shouldn't say anything well the the well, point like, the point like, of the is... tiered system the point of the tier system was to help support the players right like uh, to help, help to sort the players that that are uh, doing well we, we can barely hear you yeah we can yeah, barely hear you like some, uh, God, some sound Mike is going crazy today sorry about that that's okay get can happen man Right, go for it. Well, you guys continue talking while I fix this. All right. So, like, like I, I like to allude to what you're saying. Like, you feel bad talking negative, but we've already established that the improvements have been good. It's just the way they've been carried out. It needs some, some, some severe polishing on on some uh, aspects, right? So, uh, the 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 frequency of tour stops, the um, the 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 amount of prize money distributed, and but. Yeah, what you're saying, like the master tier system, I, I personally think the intention was definitely good, right? Reward consistency more, um, it, even like the, the gold, silver and bronze tiers uh, have some level of prestige to them, right? You can say, oh, like, look, the, the, he's a silver, or he's a gold uh, tier player or whatever. But unfortunately, due to the flaws in the system that we've pointed out earlier, that consistency now is more about who has the biggest wallet and can travel to most events <laughs> combined with doing well? Um, it's it's that um, the value of being able to say, "Hey, look, I'm a silver rank player or whatever," is is not necessarily um, always the better player who gets there, right? It's just the better player who has the most money. Yeah, is this any better or no for you guys? No, no, no. okay, no, <laughs> great. So yeah. I, I don't know, like the thing with the master tier, I think you, they require like too many points. Like at the beginning, I didn't even think one player would make 200 points. But maybe one will make it or two. Mm. I don't mm -hmm. really predict that many people making 200 points. Did you get a direct invite with gold to... to you get a direct play? invite to playoffs. <laughs> oh. I mean, you'd have to make playoffs anyways to be able to sustain your goals. So yeah. That's like Pointless. Well, right, right. The, the thing is, though, that that's what I'm wondering, right? So about the so in order to make the the, the masters thing, like the the highest one, you probably need to get some points from the championship, right? So you need to do well in championship and then get some points from there. And the maximum amount of points you can get without qualifying for worlds is twenty. And then I'm wondering again. So if I qualify for worlds, do I even like care to play like the other seasons and get like top twenty fives and everything? Historically, no, no right? Really. <laughs> Historically, people don't Probably stop playing, not, right? Like yeah. value-wise, I think the best is to just make playoffs and not play any tour stop and not care right. about the master system right now, and that's bad because they added these new things, but they're not worth going for. Mm, like yeah. they're not worth it, just mathematical. Yeah. yeah so I think what what they said when they started it, right? They said uh, every because everybody said like, oh damn, that's a that's a high bar to hit, right? That's a the, you have to do extremely well. And they said, we, we, we will evaluate, see how it's going, and, and we might adjust it as the season goes by. Um, and I hopefully hopefully they'll do that, um, especially considering uh, how, how hard it is for players to, to get uh, all those points and um, all the, the financial rewards consistently. But what I, what I also like about the master tier system is that it's, it's not bound to one HCT year. It continues in the next one, so it, it combines all your points from last year. No, it, it yeah, just like good. You, when you get a when you get a season, you lose a season. It doesn't really matter that it goes on. Yeah, but it's good because, for example, you can you can have one like the first you can have one month off at the start of the year, for example, and then if you get traction later, you can it it, it continues. It just flows straight into the next HGT year. Wait, wait, wait! How how does it flow straight? Because like, once you're doing well, if you stop doing well for one season, it interrupts it for the next three seasons. Yes. Because they count your previous ones. So it's the total opposite of what you're saying. Like you, you can take some time off in the beginning, but once you start doing well, if you stop doing well, then you mess up your next three seasons too. 
So like, for example, if you have like a bad month or two bad months, but two bad months in a row, then you need a year to recover. Like it's a daunting system to try for. But, but it also allows you to, to climb back up, right? No. No, it doesn't. No, like, it's it's if it's you just fail one month, then you yeah. just can't do it, right? Yeah, it's the opposite, right? You fail one season. It's totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. it, it's, so, it's so hard to like consistently do well. Like I was talking with other players for how hard it is to get the points and to travel to all these tournaments. Like I, I genuinely feel gold should be like 140 points. And like silver should be 120 and bronze should be 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, so close to each other. Mm -hmm. That's that's extremely close to each other, though. But I don't know. Like I think anything I, higher than 150 for gold would be. Oh, but I said like the, like not necessarily higher, but you can can set the bars lower for the others. I I don't know maybe. But like what I'm saying is like you have to dedicate so much time to it. And it's more than a full-time job because of how much you're traveling and because of how much you have to play ladder because ladder matters a lot. You probably have like no no free time, so it's like a it's like a full-time job which also takes your free time. And like the the reward is not there for the masters thing unless you get two hundred points. And two hundred points is like too much. Like mm -hmm. I think oh, one fifty should be good. Also, I think we didn't mention the best thing that Blizzard did this year, and that's the fact that you get to rank four once the season ends. That's probably, I think, the best thing that happened this year. It just that's like, really good. Saves, yeah, it saves oh, you yeah, so yeah. much yeah. from the grind. That's like pretty nice. That's for everyone, right? For yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's for like, everyone. Yeah. yeah, that's like a really good change. Yeah, I, I mean, that. it's especially for you guys that travel a lot, right? Like it. Yeah, especially it, for us. Yeah, yeah, it reduces the the amount you have to to grind or the number of total games that you have to play during the season. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we covered it all. <laughs> like, I think this discussion was great. Like, I think a lot of folks. Extensively, we've covered yeah, it all. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people, um, you know, in the chat, like, uh, um, has, have been having a uh, great back and forth too. And again, you know, this is we're having this kind of discussion. There's a lot of criticism, obviously, going on here, but it's because we we want it to be awesome. You know, like we want oh, HCT yeah. to to be an, an amazing, um, sustainable thing. You know, for the the players and the pro players, so, and just the whole pro pro uh scene so um yeah that's the reason you know that that we're throwing out some of these ideas it might be a little critical but you know just know that it's it's because we we want it to be really really because good. we care right yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe, maybe have too much about people, things but, if you don't care about them can i answer to somebody in chat like uh somebody is telling me that uh <laughs> another point that i want to uh, discuss very shortly sorry um <laughs> they are, like he's saying that blizzard said that they are willing to lower the cap from 200 in the future I think that's a very bad move. Like, what if you're like a very logical player, and at the beginning of the year you you can purposely. go for like 150 you points, purposely. but you realize you cannot go for 200 yeah. points, you and you say something like, yeah. "What? Are you sandbag in the beginning? Is that what you're saying?" Or no, like uh, I was saying, like if somebody calculates beforehand yeah. that they cannot get that they cannot humanly get 200 points. They'll just give up from the beginning. Yeah, that you cannot say that you're gonna put the bar like there and you, you might lower it because maybe people might people that might be able to go for it if it was 150 are not gonna go for it because it's 200 and they cannot have the expectation that Blizzard is gonna lower it. So but like, you, you're always you're always competing yeah. for the most points, right? No, because yeah, I mean, uh, maybe... I think I think I think the master steer could make the tour stuff more worth it. Like mm -hmm. the tour stuff without the master steer would be pretty bad value, but the master steer could add something to the tour stops and make it more worth it to go to those tour stops. But like if you don't know for sure that you are able to get to that threshold, then it's not really worth going for it. And I think, I think Rod is right on that one because like you, you can't really say now that you want to go to tour stops so you get masters, right? That just doesn't make sense right now because the points are like way too much. But yeah. what Rod is saying is that if it was lower, then people could have probably said, okay, I'm going to tour stop because I need the extra points because I want to make no, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah. kind of get that. At the same time, though, this is like their first time doing it, so. You know, like coming up with what those original numbers should be is it's probably really hard for them to even figure out what that should be. I mean, for been. me, it sounded insane at the start. Like, even yeah, it was pretty high. Like, in the beginning. yeah, it, it was, I, it sounded, I, I it, it did that, sound pretty high. I said that like seven people or five will make it from the year and then one from an A. Not even that. And, no. and now I'm like, uh, there's no way. There, so, there's like, three or two, happening. maybe. No, I, I, I bet there's like a 50 50 chance that not even one player will make it. And there's yeah. like a okay, so so that. here here's something. Should they have just done um, maybe something that just continually moves throughout the season, where it's just like 
whoever's ranked in the top, you know, like it's based on just the moving rankings where that, you know, some people would get paid at certain points versus. Yeah, having no, that would work. yeah I mean, like that, the first yeah, that would automatically adjust, adjust, like depending on it, it doesn't yeah. even you don't even care what the point total is. It's just whoever's ranked. That's that, like right? a like an ATP ranking, right? Something like yeah, that. Or, yeah. If you're going to do this tier system, it would. Yeah, it would be something yeah. like that. Like, all right. Wait, I, I want to get back to like the the point threshold for a gold master is 200, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which there, so there, we're not even halfway into the year yet, right? No, we are. No, we over. are. That's why we're. we're that's why we're doing this episode because we're definitely uh, past mid, mid season. Otherwise, we are way more than half, and ladder is like the biggest. No, I, like, oh yeah, yeah, all right. But in, we still have many more tour stops, I think, because we're like around halfway. I think just maybe, just may, maybe just across halfway with the, uh, with tour stops for the second season. It's, it's it's the tour stops plus the the the, the points you get from playoffs. Because you get points from playoffs too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think like me and Hunter. Because there are people who are virtually yeah. above a hundred points now. Yeah, it's only me and Hunter is. But... Yeah. But even you and Hunter is, you, you don't really have. That I, I don't expect myself to make two hundred points. I don't know. That sounds like. Yeah, I mean, no a, how... a big a big fail is if nobody makes it, right? So. There's you a very big chance of that happening. You can't it's have that happen. Chance. Like yeah. that, you know, th th there's no point of even have had, you know, like there's no support there if nobody makes it. So they just did the calculation wrong. Happen. Yeah. They just thought by adding like more points to, because like they basically gave like out way more points, right? Like from last year. So they thought that yeah. they would be distributed what to the top only. That, right. That yeah. Again, like if they cannot get the estimation right, they should either lowball it, and then if they lowball it too much, they would have to pay more people, which would be bad for them. But what they could do is just, as you guys said, pay a certain amount of people and like straight up say top twenty people in the ranking get gold. Uh, the I think that's so much better. Yeah. I think that's like way better. Yeah, that's like so much better because you know how much you're gonna pay out to the yes, players, exactly. to the paper, and the players know how much they should be. They they compete with other humans. Now you're not competing with humans; you're competing <laughs> against like the system. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Yeah, it I mean, you, like you wouldn't so have to. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't have to estimate. Like, it would just be, you know, it would work. It, that's just how, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't have to guess at anything. And right now, they are they based it all on last year's, you know, just point totals. Also, it's, and well, last to year, what? Like, yeah. Last year, we didn't have these kind of tournaments. Like, they cannot base it. Like, how how could they base it? Like, I don't know. The that, that, that's, of, like, I mean, what else yeah. are they basing it on? It, of course, they're basing it on something. It has to be last year. And, but and last year, they're, they're, basing it on, they're basing it on their calculations with like how many points they add to the whole system, right? Yes, but, but it's w from a but basis from last year, like, like because, because it can be so spread and it just doesn't matter, right? That yeah, it's way too spread now with all these two stops. Yeah. yeah, so are you gonna get there, you know? Are, are you gonna get to 200? I mean, I don't know, man. I need to, <laughs> there's no way I can keep doing as well as I'm doing now, so I'm guessing. I don't know. Yeah. It, you know. Yeah, everybody's telling you not to do it, so they'll lower it. <laughs> it's like, don't get there yeah, because they'll lower it. As well as he's doing now, yeah. everywhere, both on ladder and in yeah. tournaments. And yeah, also especially in tournaments, it seems like impossible to keep Yeah, going. also probably yeah. doing like playoffs. You've run, pretty, like, you pr you've run pretty good here. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay. Like, maybe Blizzard, thought... maybe Blizzard wanted, like, the player that is gold to also make worlds. But, like, most people that make worlds barely even qualify for the playoff. Like, Furna only made it because he won Oslo. Like, he got Oslo and then points from another, he barely made it. Faley, uh, also, like, uh, almost qualified and he barely made playoffs. Bunny also, like, barely made playoffs, right? There's, like, most people that qualify for the play uh, for the championship barely made playoffs. And, like, yeah. these are, you need to, like, ace ladder, do well in tour stops, and then qualify to playoffs, qualify to Worlds. Maybe then you deserve... Uh, the the gold <laughs> the right? master tier wow mm. yeah then you're the I mean, master's tier yeah. is even more prestigious than being world champion yeah, seriously like master, <laughs> master tier is like yeah you're the boss you're the serious i boss mean you're, the, you're i think master. you're way more consistent if you get 200 points oh yeah that, like I mean, oh you should yeah. be it is more prestigious like you just you, you actually yeah. deserve yes. to be praised for that for world championship you theoretically could win i don't know Maybe like, you get like six, a gold six, plate four in matches in a row and you're world champion <laughs> The gold card. You actually get a gold like 
plated card that you can hang on your wall if you're master tier. That'd be pretty sweet. Or melt it and sell it. <laughs> no. <laughs> the one oh, card man. you can't actually sell. Yeah, yeah, that'd be funny. Um, all right, Just well, um, you know, I definitely want to spend a little bit of time and give a shout out to some of our supporters. Of course, those are the Value Town patrons. Uh, if you go to Value Town slash or patreon.com slash value town you can come and support the show if you enjoy the show uh but we do like to spend a little time give a shout out to some of our patrons our legendary producer as always mike t uh ray dan bryce l dave c christopher p b and christopher d peter v aaron b keepa bradley m joris r junipe uh mario p and nathan w just to name a few uh, thanks so much, guys, for supporting. Of course, you know, we are an HSReplay.net show, too. I don't know if uh, you guys knew that or not. <laughs> some people are still getting used to that. But, um, you know, definitely go to HSReplay.net. Check out some of the, the the best stats that you'll see in Heart, Or check out the best stats you'll see in Hearthstone and uh, find out just what you should be playing in the meta right now. Um, okay, well, why don't we... Um, don't have too much time left here. Um, why don't we go into uh, some Q&A here, and uh, maybe we'll take like one or two from the chat. The chat's been actually pretty fun today. But Ahmed N, as always, our regular, do you think it is intended by Blizzard that aggro decks cost less dust than others and usually require one key legendary? I guess versus, you know, two or three or that sort of thing. Uh, I think that's just how the, how the game shapes up, right? Because yeah. think about it, like aggressive decks use low cost minions because you want to push early right you, and low cost minions uh, can do less because you know if you have a low cost minion with the fine shield taunt and battle cry deal two damage or whatever that's that's impossible right so uh, low cost minions can do less and as a result of that you cannot make them expensive yeah i think yeah the thing is that like control decks in hearthstone kind of mean like I just put removals in my deck and then greedy things, right? Mm -hmm. And greedy things are like most of the time like expensive or rare cards, like legendaries and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's why those decks end up being more like the, the cost is more. Mm -hmm. That's basically the reason I think. Yeah, I think naturally I mean, is that the case with in other games too? In other card games, is are aggro decks just generally cheaper? Yeah, they are yeah. because. Like, for example, I've played a bit of um, Shadowverse, and you have this um, this very, I think, oh man, I've Elvencraft, I think, or it's called, or Wood, I, I don't know. I don't know if I've, I haven't <laughs> played in a long time, but basically the best deck there was also like cheap uh, tokens, uh, buff those, and go face. That That's basically it. So, yeah. It's, no, it's, I actually yeah. don't, don't think it's the same as, I mean, the only other like card game that I played that had like dust and stuff like that was Duelist, and then like the aggro cards were also like kind of like the same cost because I think in in Hearthstone like there are a lot of like very expensive legendaries right that are very greedy, and that's why they up the cost. And I don't think there are that many like aggro cards that are very expensive. And I mm. think no, I think in other games it's not like that. Mm. I don't that's just how Hearthstone is because they just want to build like impressive cards like that cost a lot and do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then they just, yeah, they just make them more rare than others. Yeah, the, the cooler mechanics generally cost yeah. more, right? <laughs> That's just how, how the game is. Yeah, Nagra doesn't do anything classy, so... Yeah, yeah. Okay, Gotrix has a question. It is expensive for pro... Wait, is it expensive for pros getting all cards on several servers? Or do the teams pay for that as well? I mean, I, no. I don't. I don't think the teams specifically pay for getting cards. The teams don't pay for that, but yeah. they pay salaries. Yeah, they. Yeah, the salary you can just kind of like put it in there, right? right. Mm -hmm. And, okay. and some, 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 uh, some Hearthstone players, uh, they, they, uh, can, um, they say that buying packs, uh, is necessary for them to make a living, so they can deduct it from their taxes. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. It's like R and D basically. Or yeah, so you don't like, like it's mm -hmm. the way you look at it, right? Do you you save money? Is that winning money or save? Like it's mm -hmm. just a matter of perspective. But yeah, um, okay. So I think it's based based one twenty asks, uh, would you guys still be playing Hearthstone if you weren't worried about losing your Twitch viewers popularity in the Hearthstone community? Okay, um, I mean. Uh, that's the, that's yeah, a question for the other guys yeah, because I don't. Artie and, and Gino, like, would you? Would so, you guys? I mean, I, I think these guys are two of the most passionate people. So, so I, uh, I, I don't think these. This is a, a question that would um, 
it is as interesting. But yeah, Artie, you know, like, would you guys still be playing Hearthstone? Who goes first? Either. I mean, like, I, 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 I don't really understand the question. Like, basically, are you playing Hearthstone because of um, the, the viewership and the, the, you know, like, I guess the attention and everything that you're getting? Would, would um, you play viewership? Like, like would you yeah. play Hearthstone if it was just you in your room all the time? With with not like getting any money or getting like uh, no nah. yeah would you would you would you play the game um, I mean you obviously wouldn't play professionally if you're there in zero yeah I wouldn't play professionally right? yeah exactly. that's why I don't see the, the time question. investment if you play, if you get zero back you'd be a fool to like just play right yeah I mean I, I would definitely not be playing the same amount of Hearthstone if I wasn't getting paid and all of that 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 I mean for other no, I'm sure that's that I asked if you play it at all yeah hmm. oh at all. I I I but I still play, but I just would play like way way less. Yeah, mm -hmm. and maybe maybe even stop playing because I wouldn't care that much. I, I think well, actually I mean, the you, question was like, would you treat it like another game? Like, would you treat it like some other game that you play casually right now? I guess that maybe that's a, a, a better question. No, I, I think what the what, what the person in chat wanted is like, uh, do you enjoy other games more, but you play Hearthstone only because yeah. you are oh, yeah, by yeah. the viewership thing? Yeah, uh, that's that's, that's the, more like I think what mm -hmm. the person wants to ask i mean if i can go first is that i enjoy games that i'm good at i only like playing games that i'm good at and right now i'm only good at hearthstone because i don't have time <laughs> to play anything else. so that's a, yeah that's yeah. fair that's fair enough yeah yeah that's that's it so for me. yeah personally i don't know I, i'm good at card games um i i like card games i think right now hearthstone is the best online card game you can play but if there's gonna be like a bigger better online card game in the future. I don't know. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm never going to switch from Hearthstone. Right now, I enjoy Hearthstone. I, I enjoy it way more when I'm playing from home and streaming than when going to the tour stops. Um, but uh, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that I will never change the game. I'm not worried about that. But right now, Hearthstone is just the best online card game. So yeah, it's just never, it's for you guys, it's just never say never, right? It's mm -hmm. just, I'm yeah, doing this now, but never say never. Yeah. Like, for example, I really dislike the attitude of some people that say, like, oh, uh, Artifact is going to destroy Hearthstone, and whenever that, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that yeah. comes out, I'm going to move. Yeah. I think that's a wrong approach. Like, I think, like, I'll, for example, I'll play the game when it comes out. If it's, like, the most insane card game in the world, maybe I'll transition to that one. But maybe it won't be. Maybe Hearthstone is still, like, just the better it's, game. And then I'll it's, really good. it's really good that Hearthstone gets competition anyway. Even if it's oh, yeah, definitely, game. yeah. Because they will like, they will like, they will definitely lose some pro players to artifact. And yeah, so Blizzard has to up their game, right? Yeah. No, but I was yeah. saying that like, I, I don't think it's a good mentality to be like, oh, I'm waiting for that other game. This game sucks, and I'm still playing this game. Oh yeah, I agree. I I really dislike that attitude as well because yeah. I don't know. It to me it seems. Okay. I, I mean, no matter how much like, like, say to me, it seems like you don't want to put work into making a successful career out of Hearthstone or something. It's not fair for everybody, of of course, because there's some people who've tried that and failed because of a flawed system. But I don't know. Already I mean, saying that, oh no, Artifact's going to be big, and I'm going to switch to that. I mean, I I feel like we already went through that phase in Hearthstone. You know, where people, you know, that were just doing Hearthstone because they they became famous and popular because of Hearthstone and they so they were doing it and hating it and complaining about it literally every day. I feel like we're past that that phase. I mean I feel like the people that are still in Hearthstone, you know, like Hearthstone. You know, and Yeah, um, there's still there's still people, but you always have those, right? Yeah. It's but it, but yeah, kind know, of Stockholm yeah, syndrome, I guess. <laughs> a little bit. Like yeah. I, I'm a bit worried about the competitive scene. Like I loved Hearthstone before I went to tour stops, but after going to tour stops I kind of lost some of my passion i kind of got depressed like i don't know it, it's that's recently this year recently yeah yeah this year like for example before like that i just like enjoy it and now when i'm back home i enjoy it again like i just enjoy some aspects of the hearthstone for, of the hearthstone a lot mm -hmm. but i don't know i feel like the competitive scene is doing a lot of things wrong as we talked previously for like the last two hours. i i think <laughs> i think you're being a bit yeah. too much by your own performance and it's it's okay yeah. to have to have that's negative right. emotions towards the arts and system because yeah. You, you you expect it to do well and you, you've not quite reached the, the you, you've not met your own expectations but i don't think you should uh, make a broader uh, statement on on, yeah. on that right, right i love it 
<laughs> yeah, Jada well, loves it. Yes. Yeah. And, Thank and, goodness and, you love when, it. If you didn't love it, same, that, we got a the, serious problem. But same goes for Fino, right? Can, because yeah. if he says he loves everything, you can also question his uh, his opinion or his statements because he is obviously biased by his good performance. I'm very biased, yes. Yeah. So, same as Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm biased too. I'm super biased. Well, Ra yeah. I mean, Roddy, you, you've had probably some of the 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 worst runs, at, like sometimes, like definitely throughout the years. So I, I still, you know, I st still think yeah, you're due. There, I still man. think he'll you're due, there. man. I've seen, like, I've seen Roddy. Yeah, exactly. I know. It's, you, you, you will you just never had give a bad string of luck, like through the years. Yeah. So it's, it's well, I'm already giving happen. up on tour stops. I want to go to play. <laughs> okay. So hopefully, you get more words from that. Just embrace the streamer. Rather, just become a streamer, man. That's oh that's boy. I mean, streaming is so much more fun than like that's the end game. That's the end game, anyway. I don't know why you're even complaining about <laughs> you like, you kinda like I like competing, you know, I like competing, and I don't like competing, feeling like I have no chance to do well. Like, I mean, Ty also likes competing, and he doesn't go to tour stops. So just, just do what he does. It's like probably I would probably do that if I could afford to. Yeah, but Tice Tice, Tice doesn't really uh, has just lost his feel for uh, the 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 thrive oh, of competing. I disagree. I think Tice is like super competitive, and if tournaments would be better, he would compete more. Like it's just the system that is not that great. It's yeah. it's, it's mental health, man. You know, mental health, and all, I mean, for Ty, guys like Tice too. I mean, it's definitely much more profitable to stay home. Like much, much more profitable. So Yeah, I mean I also like hate the pressure. Like there's so much pressure to get a finish every month to yeah. like do well in tournaments to like practice for everything. You know, that's like a lot of pressure. I'd yeah. rather just like open stream, like do whatever you want, play whatever you want. You know, it's like I'd rather have that than do what I'm doing now. So <laughs> I'm just telling Radu that he should enjoy what he has because that's the end game for a lot of people. I am. Wait, wait, so, so you're telling me you're trying to you're trying to win HCT just to become a streamer in the end? Is that is that I what mean, you're telling me? I mean, I not mean, really. really. <laughs> no, I really like it. I don't, I don't. I don't enjoy streaming like that much. But that's I don't enjoy streaming that much because I basically I'm really like. Uh, invested into the competition thing, mm -hmm. and I don't get that much time to do that. I guess. Yeah. 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 But but uh, but what you're saying, Chan, uh, Chaman, is it, it is what happens, right? It is what a, a smart Hearthstone player does: is they get some success in a tournament and they build a brand off of that. We've seen that with with Thais, who in 2015, from from August to November, he had the best, some of, like maybe the best Hearthstone performance we've seen ever in the entirety of Hearthstone. He won everything or got to the finals of everything. And yeah. after his performance at the World Championships, you know, he did extremely well, reached semis, had maybe the best Hearthstone match ever against Oskaka. Mm -hmm. And then he came home, took two, two weeks of a break and, and started building his stream. And now he's one of the largest streamers out there. He has a brand. And too many Hearthstone players, I think, um, don't realize that uh, based off the success and the uh, consistency they have, they can build a brand too. And Radu, well, for example, I, I think he was there. Yeah, I mean, he I, was there early, and yeah. he has been uh, getting success um, uh, since then, like also early on. I but mean, I, I, I yeah. don't. It's, I don't think that a lot of players don't realize that. I think that streaming in itself takes a certain type of person too. You know, yeah, it does. It really you know, does. yeah, I mean, streaming people, 40 hours people, a week is, is not easy. Think, it actually isn't people, easy. Yeah, exactly. People think streaming is easy and everything. No, I'm not, I'm not, but I'm not saying it's easy. I'm no, saying... No, I'm, not, I'm not talking about you. I'm okay. Like, okay, cool, cool. People, yeah. people think it's easy and it's, yeah. it's really not. It, it takes like character to do what, like, for example, I, I really like what Tice is doing. I, I, I don't think I would be able to do what Tice is doing, enjoy the game that much, like, <laughs> for that many, like, hours and stuff. It's, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's eventually, really tough. It, it's tough for streamers too because they they probably, you know, like it, w when you are playing the game that much too, you you do tend to run out of stuff to do. You know, like when you're playing, a, you know, when you're trying to play all kinds of different things and be entertaining. Mm -hmm. you know, so there's challenges too to being streaming. And what, what I was trying to get at, Tom, was just that, you know, there's a lot of pro players that just can't. They're just not good streamers. You know, like they mm -hmm. they were meant to be more competitive players. They're you know they might not be very entertaining. So right. um, you know, it's not made right, for but, everybody, you know, this, this, but I this think path, yeah. As Hearthstone is right now, as a game and as, a, as, a, as an eSport or as a, a, a platform for branding, uh, a player has 
no choice but to also build a brand on YouTube content, uh, Twitch content. So that that's why I'm saying is that you you cannot like to do it, but if you want to uh, be a sustainable player in the system and want to uh, have longevity within the scene, then you you will have to. Yeah, like exactly. for, like 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 Stan Sivka, Stan Sivka, for example, in the beginning when he was on Misfits and all all the teams before that, Luminosity, whatever, he did not stream, and he, he eventually those teams had to let him go. And why? Because he did not he didn't have any brand value. Now look at him. He is he's post he posts on the subreddit regularly mm -hmm. with his videos, graphs, whatever. He posts YouTube videos. He streams twice a day often. It's it's insane. That guy now has brand value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Okay, how about one more? Um, okay, Shine Blazer's been asking me to ask this for a while. So, um, do you think that the balance of lineup preparation and on the day execution is too unbalanced because of the polarization of matchups? Do you think? That yes, but I'm not sure if it's because of the polarization of the matchups. But it's like an issue that I think uh, happened. Like, I, there were some tournaments, I'm not sure how many. I think Tours is one of them. I'm not sure if I can remember. Oh, Thailand too, where like, I felt I played close to perfectly, but my lineup wasn't that good. And I was getting, I was losing to people just because my lineup was a bit worse than them, than theirs. And like, uh, Fino has also said that, like, because they put more preparation in Fate to Karma, they get better results. Like, I think it matters actually more to have a good lineup in a tournament than to play it perfectly. It matters way more. That's where you get the edges in, in hard Yeah, like, 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 I feel like I'm playing really well with not such a great lineup and I'm getting wrecked. But if I have like a really good lineup, I just autopilot it and like, it's fine. And I don't like uh, that. That's not good. I really don't like that aspect. Even right, so right now you think that we're in a state that's that way? Because, you yes. know, like a lot of people are talking about the meta and there's just so many different decks, right? That are, that are viable, we're still but, in that state. but they're still very polarized or rock, paper, yeah. scissors. I mean, I don't, I think that like though a good player, like a competitive player should be able to like play a good lineup, right? Like, I think that it's okay that the preparation for that gets rewarded. It, 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 it can't just be that you play, like, the, the best decks that you're good at, and then you just go in a tournament and you win because you only play those decks. Like, your lineup has to make some sense. You have to have some strategy behind it, right? You can't just expect to do yeah. well with, like, no matter what decks you play. And The, the balance should be a bit different. Like, no, not no matter what decks you play, but, like, I don't think the strategy should matter so much. Like the lineup, yeah. Like, and like, like the matchup shouldn't be sixty-five percent win, sixty-five percent win rate versus. It should be more like fifty-six percent, right? I mean, right? So I mean like, I've, I've heard they... people talking about like polarization right now that we have like really polarized matchups, but I think this is one of the best like uh, expansions, like best balances we've had since like there are just so many decks that you the variety, you really... yeah. There's a ton of variety, yeah. yeah. yeah there's a yeah, ton the of variety. Balance is good. Would yeah, you? that's also another thing that I wanted to give props. I think like uh, the last balance path they did was probably one of my favorites they've ever done. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just love the balance uh, the last one they did with. Uh, yeah, we've you know, we've never seen, you know, fifteen decks in the top two tiers. I, I just think ever, there are like very few toxic cards right now that should be removed, like all card and. Which uh, one? Yeah. Which one? The, all cards. That, yeah, all card and Faldor are like the two cards that should be removed in my opinion. It's just. They just bring so much like negative. I think I think you're right. On the, the 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 meta diversity is is uh, very large, but I'd have to like I don't know. Still, the meta seems kind of boring. I don't know. It's just that the decks. You know, aren't... I know what it, it's boring because we've been playing the same cards for like ages, right? Like yeah. the new cards didn't really have like a big impact because they were. Yeah, they were like, weaker, like, like because it's Uncoro, Frozen Throne, and uh, Cobalt was just so big, right? Well, the power level. Thing. I mean, only... we only got like the old and even cards, right? That, yeah. I don't recall what else we got. It's it's just that we didn't get so, so many. Which new is very cards powerful. <laughs> and they also removed a bunch of cards, so we're left with like way less cards to play right now. That's why it gets boring. But I mean, so at the same time that we. Um, I mean, the, the the thing about this expansion was that the power level went down, right? In some way, it should have. Right? That's fine. And, right, right. And, and we we actually even see some of the older cards actually popping up. I actually think that's cool. I I, I like that. It's the first time we've seen, you know, this type of um, you know deck building reaction, right, to to a, a set. And um, you know, we're only about I would say about two weeks before we start announcing the next set. So 
you know, at this point, we are kind of in that cycle where we're towards the end of a, a you know, expansion. Do you know cycle. something we don't, Chen? No, I mean, it's just like normal, right? Like, it's going to be announced <laughs> no, in August, know. right? It's, it's already end of June, so... It, yeah, no, definitely, we're, yeah, we're really August close. Expansion. Yeah. The meta, the meta is fine. Like, it's way better than one year ago, I think. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, I, like, I, I like the way, I like the, way the, the game is doing, mm -hmm. like, meta-wise and stuff like that. Yeah, like, it's, one it's, year it's ago like, now. It's the decisions about, like, the, organiza the organizing and everything that... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you should, uh, you should see a doctor about that, Radu. <laughs> I mean, conquest is garbage, like mathematically. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have I don't like. I don't like it either. LHS. But it's easy right, for so, the team. Would you rather? So you, you'd rather LHS or last year was standing or? I don't like that much either. Like I I LHS like... is better, but mm -hmm. it's not the best. I, I, I don't think it? LHS is always better. I think LHS is better right now. Like right now, yeah, I have to prepare really for like yeah, Italy and Oakland that are conquest, and I'm just depressed. I hate conquest right now. I think it's like so bad. I uh, hated conquest always, and like LHS, I have periods. Like LHS is sometimes good, sometimes it's awful. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's the same. With but me. conquest is like always just straight up. Conquest is always awful. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the that's the standard but, right now. Again, like, what would you prefer? Issues, what would you prefer seeing? Okay, so 90% uh, of my issues, or 99% of my issues, are related to the competitive aspect. Like, I think the game of Hearthstone is doing fine. Like, we get nice cards, good expansions. I like that. I just don't like that we're playing Conquest, that we're playing uh, these two stops without qualifiers and what we talked for the yeah. past two hours. Yeah. What I would rather see, I don't know, like, I, I, me and my Twitch chat made the format in, like, I don't know, 20 minutes of discussing how we can uh, make it. And, like, I think it's better than, like, Conquest by a, whew, miles. Are you talking about Strike? Yeah, yeah, uh, but I don't think strike is per like you could you could like put more work into it and come up with something maybe that is also easy to explain or better for like the players or for the viewers or whatever yeah. you want to achieve. But like, That's it. just think of conquest. Each player brings three decks, okay? Four, but you ban one. You left with three, okay? Each deck against each deck. There's nine possible matchups. You play five out of nine. Like it's so broad and it's so random that like you can just hit your bad matchups like. On average, out of the nine matchups, let's say if you're favored, you have five good, four bad, okay? Uh, what if you queue two bad and three good? That's like very likely to happen, and you're, you're in, at a disadvantage, even though your lineup was better. Mm -hmm. What if you queue one good out of your five, and he queues four good? Yeah, I mean, it's, a... it's hard for him to queue four, because like the first two matter, like he queues two good at the beginning. Oh, man, this is... This is, right. this, yeah, yeah. yeah. Before I, before yeah, before we uh, expand, yeah. uh, I, I was, I was only like, so, so far. To, I was saying, uh, I was assuming like every game goes to like uh, um, all the five games, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. realistically, like game one, let's say he queues a good matchup. He has four good, and you have five good. He queues one good game one. He queues one good game two, and let's say he wins them. Then you zero two. You have to reverse sweep his for his last deck. It, it's very yeah. likely to happen, by the way. It will happen yeah, yeah, yeah. multiple times. I, I, I just to, to bring it back a bit, I agree that um, Artzone quickly um, settled on the formats it had, right? So LHS and Conquest. And um, I would also love to see a bit more experimentation with, with formats. And But I think it's not Blizzard who should start with it because then it impacts on a huge what? skill, right? No, 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 no. Because listen, listen, listen. I think we should have testing more community. Grounds. Yeah, yeah. For yes, sure, for sure we should have more. I, I did my own thing and it was shut down. Like, when? Right. When did you do your thing? When? When did you do the thing? You did your own thing? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Are you organized? Like, there, there were, there were platforms using the strike format. Yeah. And I was, I also did a tournament with the strike format and the players loved it. And like, Blizzard didn't give points to the tournament, uh, to the tournament oh, site. Yeah, they would yeah, want yeah. to like, uh, mm -hmm. keep doing tournaments in that format. So they didn't directly shut it down, but they didn't recognize it as an official format. It's okay. yes. I mean, it's okay that you didn't get points or anything. The whole yes, point is I really agree. to, to it's, it's a proof of concept, right? Like, it, they, so they have used like, it. I probably They've... did the most anybody could do about making a format and pushing it, yeah. and nothing happened out of it. So, like, she, she's right about like that. Like, coming up with yeah. a fantasy format and, like, doing something. Well, with... that's because we didn't have anything follow up with that, too. I think if, if more... If another event did it, and then another event it did it, then I mean that—that's how last that's year was standing. That—that's that's how it was. One that, event. I did one event. Like I did one event, and it was good. 
No, and, but but what I'm trying to tell you is like that's how Last Hero Standing and Conquest actually became adopted by Blizzard is because other tournaments did it first, and then they like, oh yeah, yeah it seems to be work, and the community likes it, and that's what they ended up making it, you know, like standardizing it. So, um, you know, something radically indifferent. It, it's going to take more than just like one tournament. It's what I'm trying to tell you. Like it's going to take Blizzard wanting to change it. If they want to change it, there's like so many ways to do it. Just hire a mathematician to like f find the format. I'm pretty sure somebody could like like. If me and my chat <laughs> can like find a format that is ten times better than Conquest in twenty minutes, I'm pretty sure Blizzard can find like a super intelligent intellectual that is like exactly. They like, are you Chucky, right? The same, it's exactly the same <laughs> with like what you. I said yeah. earlier about like Rad is saying, like uh, saying some things about how we can improve the uh, HCT thing, right? Yeah. I think if they put more work into it and like have more people that are actually like, you know, like committed to changing things. I think then we can see something positive, but I, it just doesn't seem that they want that, right? All right, but I think maybe mm, the, I don't know. Cause, I don't know. Cause... The infrastructure is too hard to handle, right? I think everybody in the Hearthstone esports team is managing the infrastructure. Like, it must be a super daunting task. Think about it to like talk with all the organizers, make all these events across the world, promote these yeah. events. It's like so many I things. Don't, to I don't do. actually know how but... many people work on that. Like, how many people actually are. Working on all of these things that we're talking about. And there are like a hundred like a hundred people in the HSC. Like they need thing? to have like standings, oh, wow. they need to have like, people, stuff. They need to have everything. There's like so many things they need to do. I understand why they're not like, uh, trying to like improve the current point. aspects. Yeah. But no, no, but uh, to to add to, to Radu, because um when when does doubt uh, when is the uh letter downtime? Is it end of October? November? I don't know. The downtime? Downtime for what? what you like like no H T points? There's uh, no nothing in like December that. because of New Year's. They they don't want players to play during New Year's Eve. That would be like weird. Oh, okay. So they don't uh, they don't want people to feel so lonely, man. But that's fine. But uh, yeah, it's only it's only the last month, right? It's December. Yeah. Okay. So why? But uh, and tour stops. When do they end? I don't know. We don't know clearly. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Actually, there is a tour stop schedule. Yeah, <laughs> Lol. I mean, but, uh... I, 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 I might have like a down season, like next season, like I probably won't need to play if I get my top 25 now and some other people probably too, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I yeah. think like if, if they want to give the players a breather as well as the viewers, you know, from competitive Hearthstone while we ramp up to. I, I honestly but... don't think there's like anything in August, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, yeah, there is. Think... there is, there is, there's definitely there one. Yeah, um, I think there's an. But there's definitely not as many as like in this month. Like, um, it's the HCT Esports Arena, I think, in uh, in LA or something. Yeah. No, in Oakland. That's like in that's in July. If you uh, in I, I'm pretty sure if you go to the schedule, nothing is really announced yet, right? They 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 definitely have something in August. I, I've seen it on the schedule, which they, they are tournaments every month, so like there will be something. But, but, but anyway, like... but what I was trying to say is that. If they have some downtime with no tour stops or like lesser, like fewer points, then then they can give some room to third party organizers to uh, get some invitationals going, which RDU would love to see more of. And I think everybody would like to see more of, you know, kind of these all star matches, um, or and and also give room for a bit more experimentational formats, because uh, you know. I, I definitely agree with not giving points to those tournaments right away if you haven't tested it a bit. And and one tournament, although I think it's a great initiative, isn't isn't you know you, you can you can really say oh we've seen one tournament now all those tournaments are, are getting points. But um, give some more space and time for other formats to uh, be experimented with, not not necessarily yeah eventually for improving the uh, competitive scene but also for viewers to enjoy one of the most fun tournaments i've ever like i like people enjoyed most was fire bets tournaments with card bands right and you know you don't have to adopt that into competitive hearthstone but it's nice to have those alternative tournaments and give some room for that yeah and and, and i i think that um you know like you were saying before tom like this these type of tournaments are like testing grounds proof of concepts mm -hmm. and and you, you know i think that if batstone if it can you know i think batstone 2 didn't quite do as well as batstone 1 but let's yeah. just say hypothetically batstone 2 did just as well as batstone 1 and firebat just kept doing it batstone 3 and 4 and 5 
who knows? We might be banning cards right now. <laughs> you know, like you, you, you know, you never know. I don't think banning happen. cards is a solution. Like as I said, no, it's it's not necessarily no, a banning card. The whole point was that good. there's a format. It's not saying it's good yeah. as a game. Yeah, like. I can play ladder, and if I'm ha if I have a good deck and I play it well, I will see the improvement. I will get like very good ranks consistently. We see like the top players if they want to get the finish, they probably will get the finish if they put in the time. So like, what is wrong with tournaments? Like, I think we should look at every single aspect. Like, let's take it from format uh, that we play, like Conquest LHS and stuff, yeah. and then let's look at tournament formats. Let's look at systems. I think there needs there needs to be some improvement if they want. Uh, more skilled players to win more consistently. And I think right. the biggest issue could... right now is Conquest, yeah. or like NHS Conquest. Both right, of but them what we're that. saying is that you, you can't just snap your fingers and say, hey, look, we've seen this, this happen in a tournament once, we're going to adopt that now. What we're saying is that you, you need more tournaments that do not directly influence competitive Hearthstone, the HT system, yeah. and hurt that integrity potentially. Uh, just say we need you need some off time or other tournaments that are not woven into the HT system um, to give those formats a chance to prove themselves. Yeah, yeah, basically, that's yeah. pretty much what you're saying. Okay, well, why don't we wrap up? <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a definitely yeah. a great episode. Glad we were uh, wrapping up half glad, an hour ago. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and then we we continued on for another 20, 30 minutes here. <laughs> No, but it was a lot of fun. This is definitely a great discussion. This is pretty much, you know, you know, mission accomplished in terms of trying to, um, you know, talk about all the, uh, all the issues and you know, some of the things that we can do to improve it, or maybe some ideas to improve it. But uh, why don't we do some shout outs, Tom? You want to start us out? Any kind of shout outs you want to do? Shout outs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I just thank you for having me on the show, yeah, man. I, uh, it's been a, it's been a blast uh, to to finally make it on here. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I don't know. Just uh, everybody in chat, thank you for your contribution to the discussion as well. So thank you. Yeah, speaking of another first timer, Fino, <laughs> you got any shout outs you want to do? Shout outs? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> shout out to, some... to your team, man. You got a team, team, dude. You've got yeah. sponsors. Shout out to my... Actually, yeah, shout out to my team for. Hashtag for Team Genshin on your, your arm, man. It's. <laughs> <laughs> And call out to Blizzard for not releasing the team standings yet, so that my team doesn't get exposure. You know? oh, that's a different kind of shout. That's not a shout out. That's a, that's a call yeah. out. I said that's it. a call out, not a shout out. Yeah. Okay, are you? How about you? So. <laughs> oh man, I I hope we've I hope oh, we've no. oh, no. helped your mental health today, Radu. Yeah, you thought you had Red Bull already. I can know it the same way, like when I'm when you as if I would be winning like Oscars. No, but jokes aside, <laughs> a big, big shout out to my team and uh, to my fans and to be all, people that watch my stream. I mean, not necessarily my fans, but people that watch my stream for making yeah, big fan, my, by the way. Yeah. for making my <laughs> thank you <laughs> for making my career possible. Like I don't think I could uh, do what I do if I wouldn't have the support of G two and of the lovely followers that I have. So big thanks to that. Um, yeah, you're welcome, man. I, I also want to apologize if I was like too heated. Like, no, I, you're great. No, I, I, no, no, great no, 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 don't apologize. Because I love the game and I see so much potential, and it's not being used. We're playing Conquest. Like, I, I see yes, so much okay, potential okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that I could see you being used better in the competitive aspect. But I love the game and I'm heated because I just want things to be better. But like it's not necessarily for me, for like other people that compete and go to these tour stops. But that's like, the I just same want for all of us, right? Like yeah, for you, all of us. Like you stream and play, Chanman uh, streams uh, the, these podcasts and he's active in the community. Fino uh, plays and streams. I write articles and and, uh, and 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 do all of the other things. And it's not not because. If we say something critical, it's not because you're like, oh yeah, screw those guys and they don't know what they're doing. It's because we love what we're doing. And we want to be able to continue with to do it with the entire community, which we yeah. like so much. Yeah, yep. It's because we have this passion, right? And when we feel that something is not good or not sustainable or not fair, we want to like talk about it so that uh, the issue is being talked yeah, about. Yeah, you need it's, to it's address feedback. it. Right? It's feedback, you know. It's, it's, yeah. I hope, hopefully, they take but it. Now, but but now, offend, but I just hope I don't offend too many people. No, but I, I, I personally really dislike. Uh, this guy, this apologizing for being critical, but I, yeah, I, I, I mean, this is constructive. I mean, I, mean, I, I feel like <laughs> if, this if is they, constructive. If, so. if somebody doesn't understand why I'm being critical, then it's more their problem than mine. But that's yeah. my point. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody else for uh, watching and uh, obviously tuning in. You can find the VODs uh, for the show if you missed any of it on youtube.com slash hsreplaynet or on Champion V2. It's, it's kind of going on both right now. Uh, you can find us on all the audio channels, iTunes, uh, Google Play, and soundcloud.com slash V. And you can actually find us on Spotify now. We finally made it on Spotify. It took like took me forever to like finally get approved for spotify so uh you can find that i i don't actually don't have the i don't have the the link on me right now it's kind of sucked or else i would i would uh post and it in the chat here uh, yeah. podcast on there as well yeah it should be all on there just the feeds on there so you can you can find them all on there now so awesome. definitely great there and then uh, of course uh just um big shout out to our sponsors zip recruiter and of course hsreplay.net and all our patrons who uh support the show you guys are awesome but uh, that's going to be it, guys, for this week. So for Tom, Dino, Radu, and myself, Chairman B, we'll see you next week. Cheers.